from Lady Gator Park on the campus of Santa Ma High School. It's time for high school softball on the Rev Game of the Week. My name is Jeff Porsche, and along with Mike Moeller, we welcome you to today's 5-5A district game between the top-ranked Dutchtown Lady Griffins and the second-ranked Santa Ma Lady Gators. When we return, we'll talk about today's matchup, followed by the first pitch here on the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou, to the river, to the lake, with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi-Fi and Metro E, our best-in-class services are tailored to your needs, backed by in-house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. B.T. Chapman and A.J. Pickett with Advantage Therapy are honored and excited to team up with Dutchtown High School's athletics. At Advantage Therapy, we are dedicated to helping our patients regain the highest possible functional status through one-on-one patient care. Advantage Therapy has spent nearly two decades providing both outpatient orthopedic physical therapy and occupational therapy to the people of Ascension and surrounding parishes. From all of us at Advantage Therapy, Go Griffins! It's game day at Raising Cane's. If you want to order like a champ, forget about X's and O's. The only play you're running is chicken. So what combo are you picking? We've got tailgates of hand-battered, cooked-to-order chicken fingers and cane sauce. And jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. This season is about to be unbeatable. Raising Cane's chicken fingers. One love. (laughs) Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyron Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Tata Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Tata Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Tata Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You gotta call. You gotta call Tata. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high school seamlessly blends with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook costs. Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. Rev Business is here to connect your company beyond your storefront. We're here to power your passion, improve your communication, and link you to your customers with the services you need and the local support you deserve. From operating your front office to tracking your inventory, our team is ready to deliver services that transform your day-to-day with flexibility and consistency. So you can focus on what matters most, your customers. Rev Business. Welcome to the Rev Game of the Week at Santa Ma, number one ranked Dutchtown versus number two ranked Santa Ma, according to the 5-5A, not just in 5-5A, but in the Division I non-select. They are the number one and number two teams. Jeff Porsche and Mike Moeller are here, and this is a rematch 
a rematch of a game that was played at Dutchtown about two and a half weeks ago, a game that we saw on Rev and a very historic night. Yeah, it was a great game. I mean, we, we talked about the, the matchup, everything. You know, it was everything that we anticipated, and uh, I'm sure tonight will be the same. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit different. We said last time both of them, you know, came in uh, with, with, with no losses, you know, on the season so far. We knew somebody was going to leave with a blemish after that game. It happened to be Santa Mall right back here for the rematch. It's going to be exciting. We'll see what happens. Right, and Santa Mall nearly came back and beat Dutchtown. Uh, they were up 7-2 to two going into the seventh inning. Then Alex Franklin hit a home run, and then they got a couple more runs, and they had to bring in another pitcher. Abby Fraley came in, got a strikeout for the last out, and wound up winning that game 7-6. to six. And you see Maddie West was the winning pitcher. Bradley Decato was the losing pitcher. That's going to be our matchup again today. So we expect a very similar matchup um, we don't know what the outcome is going to be yet, but it'll be fun. Yeah, and we talked about it. I mean, we saw Dutchtown, they used three pitchers. They used mm -hmm. all three of their pitchers. They brought in uh, Dunham in the middle in between, you know, before they even brought in Fralick. So uh, they're not scared to, to, to swap the, the pitchers out to, you know, give the, the opposition a little little different look here and there. And you see the two coaches meeting with the umpires, Nancy Ensminger for Dutchtown and Amy Petrie for Santa Ma, and of course they're the two leaders in District 55A and 55A uh, maybe the best district in the entire state of Louisiana when you look at the uh, overall rankings three teams from the Ascension Parish the AP <laughs> are in the top six yeah they see the Dutchtown comes in at seven and zero oh with you know in the district record Santa Ma right behind at five and one hasn't played a game yet they still haven't made it that game against East Ascension right um Look at Dustown, Santa Mall, East Ascension, top three in the district. And when you talk about, you know, overall in the state, I think it's one, two, and six. So yes. to have the top six, you know, three of the top six teams just from this parish, I mean, that, that shows you how, how, how strong not only our area is, but the district as well. And when you look at the standings, Dutchtown, if they can win tonight, they pretty much wrap up a district championship. Santa Mall, if they win and beat Dutchtown and split the series. They're still a half game back because, Mike, like you said, they, the, the, re, the, the rematch between Santa Ma and EA was rained out, and so they had not made that up yet. So that's going to be the determining factor. But uh, Santa Ma could still tie for the district title if they win here today. So a lot at stake for both teams. Yeah, like you said, I mean, we, we expect it to be – I mean, you look at that one, two, not only in the mm -hmm. district, but in the state, right? So it's going to be a heavyweight matchup tonight. I can't uh, can't wait to see how this is going to come down. We've seen this this matchup, you know, in, in every other matchup, I guess, with Santa Mall over the last few years has been a little bit lopsided. Uh, now the, 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 the playing field's kind of evened out a little bit. And um, like I said, it's, I mean, it, it can go either way tonight. Mm -hmm. And I uh, don't know if uh, the number one uh, ranking is at stake here. You would assume that uh, if – Santa Mall wins, they're either going to be number one after tonight or a lot closer than they were to Santa Mall, be, 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 a lot closer to Dutchtown before tonight. So that's, a, that's another thing that's at stake. These two teams might even play again later in the postseason. I would not be surprised if this was not the, or wasn't the last time these two teams meet each other. But we'll find out. We're going to get to the starting lineups in the public address announcer right now.
And we are ready for the rematch. Maybe the biggest game of the year in District 5-5A. Dutchtown number one visiting number two, Santa Ma. And as we get ready for the first pitch, we'll turn it over to Mike, who will give you the batting order for Dutchtown. Lady Griffins today leading off the third baseman, Riley Bennett, hitting second, the second baseman, Caroline Johnson. Jenna Blanchard will play left field and hit third, and hitting clean up is his shortstop, Harper Dupree. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Maddie Keller. Hitting sixth is the first baseman, Brooke Vicknair. Hitting seventh, Katie Van Hander Haverbeck, the designated player. And hitting eighth, the right fielder, Anna White. Batting ninth is the catcher, Caroline Mathis. And in the circle today for the Santa Monica Lady Gators is Braley Decato. She started the game at, against Dutchtown at Lady Griffin Park, and she got the loss in the 7-6 uh, victory by Dutchtown. And uh, she had a little trouble um, in the middle innings, and uh, we'll see if she can improve her performance here today. Yeah, a little, little bit of trouble, but still had her team in the, you know, in the running at the end there. They, the right. score was only 7-6, kept them in the game. But she comes in with 105 innings pitch with a 2.9 e, 2.91 ERA. She's got 13 wins against five losses with 85 strikeouts and 43 walks. So... She will face one, two, and three, and that's Riley Bennett, Caroline Johnson, and Jenna Blanchard, a really powerful top of the lineup for Dutchtown. We've seen all three of these girls hit home runs in our broadcast this season. That's the first pitch is a strike. Bennett, probably the top offensive player for the Lady Griffins. That one's a little low and counts even one and one. Yeah, it comes in with a 451 batting average. Actually leads uh, the Lady Griffins offensively in seven of the categories and played appearances at bats, runs, hits, triples, and hit by pitch. And she tries to drop one, and it goes foul. So a little element of surprise right there. Spoiled as the bunt attempt goes foul. So now the count one and two. We are just underway here at Santa Ma, Dutchtown at Santa Ma, one versus two in District 5, 5A, and we are ready for the one-two pitch coming from Decato High. Two-two had a little pitch to waste there. Caroline Johnson on deck. Two-two pitch, and that's a strike on the inside corner. 
and Bennett goes down looking. Let's take a look at the Santa Ma defensive starters right now. Defensively today for the Lady Gators in the outfield from left to right, you have Emily Terrio, McKenzie Ellisar, and Bailey Ducote. On the infield third base, Alex Franklin, shortstop Sam Landash. At second is Mary Beth Zeller. First base is Kinley Mesh. Doing the catching is Brooke Rabelais, and in the circle, Braley Decato. And the first pitch to Johnson is a strike. And so Decato off to a good start. Got the strikeout to Bennett and ahead, 0 1 to Johnson. And gets that outside corner, and it's 0 2. She's filling up the strike zone. Yeah, Decato's filling it up, getting ahead early. You get those Lady Griffins. Down 0-2, 1-2. It's tough to battle back. And pitch high and outside. We saw that earlier with the two-strike count. Now, got to be careful with Johnson. She homered off of Decato in the first inning in the last matchup between these two teams. And she takes a ball a little high. Yeah, same sequence right there. Right there. She used it against Bennett after that, that 0-2 pitch up or that kind of that waist pitch tried to come back and paint inside. Just missed on that one. And there's a swing and a miss and back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the game for Braley Decato. Johnson goes down. So a very good start for Santa Ma as the first two batters are retired. Now Jenna Blanchard comes to the plate. She also homered in the first matchup between these two teams. And the first pitch is outside. So Decato bringing it to the Dutchtown hitters early on. Behind 1-0. And, and that one high. So she started out ahead in the count to the first two hitters, but she's behind to the third hitter. Yeah, 2-0 to 3-hole Jenna Blanchard hitting 429. Like you said, she did homer against her in the previous matchup. She's got three on the season, so you don't want to serve up a cookie right here because she can – Put a number on that scoreboard. And she's now behind 3-0. and So being very careful with Harper Dupree on deck. And taking all the way, strike. 3-1. and one. Two outs here. Top of the first. Nobody on for Dutchtown. And there's a fly ball, and it's going to be trapped. Nope. Nope. And nope. a base hit. Looked like the right fielder, Dakota, had a shot at it, but could not come up with it. It was trapped in her glove. And so you have our first base hit of the game with Blanchard at first. Yeah, you see it again here, just a little bit off the end of the bat there for Blanchard. You see Zeller going back. Wasn't going to be able to get there, and the right fielder, Dakota, made a dive, but just in that kind of no man's land there for the first hit of the game. Blanchard at first, and there's a drive towards the gap, and it's caught. Nice catch by Mackenzie Ellisar, and that saves possibly a run because Blanchard was off on the pitch, and so no runs on one hit, no errors, and one player left on base. So after half inning, no score between Santa Monica and Dutchtown, and now we'll look at the batting order for the Santa Ma Lady Gators. Yeah, leading off today for the Lady Gators is going to be the center fielder, Mackenzie Ellisar, hitting second, the third baseman, Alex Franklin. Hitting third, Kinley Mesh, she plays first base, and the cleanup hitter is Mary Beth Zeller, she plays second base. Hitting fifth, Sam Landash at shortstop. The right fielder, Bailey Dakota, hits sixth. The left fielder, Emily Terrio, hits seventh. And Lauren Allen, the designated player, hits eighth. Batting ninth is the catcher, Brooke Rabelais. And in the circle for Dutchtown, the winning pitcher the last time these two teams met, Maddie West. And so she's uh, trying to get the 2-0 uh, the record against Santa Mon. Yeah, Maddie comes in with a 2.58 ERA. She's got 57 innings pitched on the year. She's got a win-loss record of 9-2. and two. She's got 59 strikeouts against 35 walks. And i got to go back to that last at-bat and that shot that we <laughs> saw because if that – if that falls, that's going to be extra bases. And oh, you yeah. see Amy Petrie right there. Yeah. Amy Petrie, she uh, has won back-to-back -back state championships. She's trying to get her fourth one this season. Yeah, nothing but success from her. I mean, you see that 
5A state champ Santa Mall 2019, 22, and 23. Um, was at East Ascension previously, came over here and took over and has done nothing but uh, pretty much ran the table since she's got here. And now West will face 1-2-3. We talked about Elisar making a run-saving catch to end the inning. Guess who's leading off? Yeah. Well, they say you make a good play, you, you, you lead off, right? But, I mean, the, the thing that, that stood out to me on that play right there, you have to take the perfect angle, right? Yep. Because that ball's hit on the line. It wasn't, like, looped to where she had a little, a little time to make adjustments here and there. She took the perfect angle, got a great jump, cut that ball off in that right center gap, and for sure saved the run. So it's Alisar, Franklin, and Mesh, and they're ready for her to lay it down. She's so good at it. Ball one. Elisar and Franklin, if there's a better one-two punch on, at the top of a lineup in softball, I'd like to see it. Yeah, hitting 506. No homers. I mean, when she gets on base, she's got a couple triples and a couple doubles, but uh, you know, 26 stolen bases. We know she can fly. She can just put that ball down there at about six, seven feet in front of the plate and still make it safely to first. She's so good at <clears throat> making that ball die right as she makes contact. And you see everybody is up. The entire infield, you see Bennett, Johnson, and Vickner, even with the pitcher, Dupree's back a little bit just in case. Yeah, she has the back control, too. She can just dump one right over Bennett's head at third base there if she comes in too early, too. We've seen her do that. Well, she takes a strike right there, and so now count moves to two and one. So after two quick balls falling behind, Alistar gets back in it. Excuse me, West gets back in it. Two and one. Lead off hitter, swing and a miss. Looked like she was trying to take that shot out there at that time. Yeah, she's trying to say inside out that ball. Yeah, trying to hit something into that, that left field area with the infield drawn in. So two and two, and uh, the bunt possibility is still very real with two strikes. And Ooh. looking for it, but did not get it, and the count is full. It's a pretty good pitch right there. Yeah. Obviously, we don't have the best angle from here, but um, right. see the catcher, Caroline Mathis, get up. She was going to throw that ball around right there. Our vantage point here is down the uh, foul line in right field, so we can't see it from behind as usual. But it was close. 3-2, drops it to the pitcher, and a quick throw to first. Ooh. Looked like uh, she had trouble getting to it, but <laughs> one to three for the first out. And now let's look at the Dutchtown defensive starters. Yeah, defensive today for the Lady Griffins in the outfield from left to right. Jenna Blanchard, Maddie Kelly, and Anna White. On the infield, third base, Riley Bennett. Shortstop, Harley Dupree playing second base is Caroline Johnson. And at first, Brooke Vicknair. Doing the catching is Caroline Mathis. And in the circle, Maddie West. And so one out after the grounder to the pitcher retires Elisar. Alex Franklin, the leading hitter average-wise for the Lady Gators. Of course, she leads in other categories as well. Future LSU Lady Tiger. One of the best players ever to play softball here in Ascension Parish. And behind again. That's a back to back hitter that she fell behind 2 0. She was able to get back with LSR and get her to ground out to start the game. Let's see what she can do here. And a pop up. Second baseman Johnson trying to get to it. She can't. She thought the right fielder was behind her. She was not, and that's a stand up double. Yeah, Anna White was playing pretty deep back there and right, a little miscommunication right there as you see Johnson go back. I think she had a play on the ball, but just thought uh, White was going to call her off, but she never got there. Yeah, let's look at the replay. And you see White, she's playing near the, uh, near the fence. So she had a lot of room to make up, and Johnson just didn't communicate with her, like you said. That's a sophomore and a freshman out there, and that uh, had maybe a little bit of inexperience helped out with uh, Franklin getting on base. Yeah, ends up at second, too. Pretty heads up base runner right there. She saw there was a little confusion, never checked up. You know, sometimes you see these, these hitters get frustrated when they hit a little pop-up that, you know, they think is going to be caught. They kind of shut it down. Not, not the uh, case for Franklin there. She just never checked up, made it all the way to second easily. And now strike call to the number three hitter, Kinley Mesh. Franklin on second, one out. 
No score, bottom of the first. A one high. For a little heat there, but <laughs> nowhere near the strike zone. So first runner reaches scoring position on either side here. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Mesh, you had Franklin we talked about. She was sitting 515. A little bit of a dip here, 362. <laughs> which, <laughs> but 362 is, which is outstanding. Still exceptional. Yeah, yes. which is still exceptional. She's got four bombs. First about seven hitters as a strikeout. As Mathis is able to hold on for strike three, and so two outs. I was about to say that one through seven in the uh, Santa Maria lineup is just deadly, and the team's hitting 381. They've dropped a bit from last yeah, time. They it were was 401. Four, yeah, <laughs> whatever. I was just about to say that. I remember that because that you never see that team right. batting average over 400. That's ridiculous. It's incredible, but uh, you know one through seven is just outstanding. And now you're going to get the cleanup hitter, Mary Beth Zeller, with a runner in scoring position and two outs. And that's fouled away, I believe, off of Mathis. Has to be a foul as Franklin stays at second. LSR grounded out to the pitcher. Franklin doubled a little uh, pop-up that was misplayed. And then Mesh strikes out. And that's where we stand right now. Two outs in the bottom of the first. Samoa trying to get on the board first in the ball. Zeller, 373. You really don't get a, uh, a bad spot until you get to the maybe the eight and nine hitters. And that's fouled off of the mask of Caroline Mathis. Which isn't really bad spots. It's just not as phenomenal yeah, not of as numbers. Deep. You no, know, I, don't wanna, yeah. I don't mean that as a uh, – I don't, I don't mean that they're, they're – that is terrible or anything like that. It's just yeah. not 300 and 400 hitters. Right. And 500 hitters. Yeah, exactly. San Juan's got a 500, two 500 hitters at the top. Then you got 362, 373, 432, 413, 344. That's what one through seven give you. But one more strike, and West gets out the inning without giving up a run. They sit with score Franklin most likely. One, two, five. Two and two. Beautiful weather today, too. I'm checking oh, yeah. out that flag. Not very breezy at all. I thought it would be cold. Yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit of a breeze blowing in. And uh, a little ahead of that one goes out towards center field at the baseball park. But it, I thought it was going to be cold. It was cold this morning in the 40s, but it got up to the 70s, and it's in the uh, low 70s, high 60s right now. Not a cloud in the yeah. sky. Perfect weather, perfect crowd, big crowd again. If if the wind is doing anything, it might be blowing in a little. 2-2, strike three, and the side is retired. No runs on one hit, no errors, one left. We go to the top of the second, no score. Dutchtown at Santa Mall. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river, to the lake, with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi-Fi and Metro E. Our best-in-class services are tailored to your needs. Backed by in-house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Advantage Physical Therapy, SCC Heating and Cooling, Tata Law Firm, 
Raising Cane's in Prairieville, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Hollis Orthodontics, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffin's Sports Medicine Program. Touchdown in Santa Ma, one versus two. We go to the second inning, or should I say round two, as you have a battle royale here at Santa Ma. Jeff Porsche and Mike Moeller here to bring it to you and lead off with Keller, Vic Nair, and Van Haverbeck in the first pitch from Decato is a strike to Matty Keller. Both teams scoreless in the first. And there's a ball outside. Matty Keller, 394 on the season. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. And we talked about how Santa Ma as a team hitting 381, Dutchtown hitting 352, so they're no slouch either. Swing and a miss and a strike. Three. That's the third strikeout for Decato. She's looking outstanding, Mike. Yeah, she's got some some cheese today. It looks like you can, I mean, maybe it's because the window's open and we're not used to, to hearing that, but uh, she's throwing the ball pretty hard right there. She, Take a look at Nancy Inchminger, the uh, coach of the Lady Griffins right there. Been around uh, Dutchtown for a long time. Brought that team to the state finals in 2015. And when she was at uh, Parkview Baptist prior to Dutchtown, she won a couple state championships. Yeah, she's looking for her first uh, state championship at Dutchtown right now. She's got them in a position to compete for that. That's for sure. Brooke Vickner at the plate. 0-1 count. And that's low. Count even at one and one. So Vickner hitting 316, another 300 hitter. 300 hitters all over both lineups. And that is to center field. And the second base, second baseman Zeller comes in and catches the fly ball for the second out. That one looked like it was kind of off the fist right there. And easy catch for Keller. LSR was there to back her up in case she didn't get it, but not necessary. And it's two outs here. And a strike call to Katie Van Haverbeck. She's the designated player. She kind of splits time with Ariel Hayes in that designated player spot. Ball high. So count even, one and one. So Keller struck out. Vicknair flew out to second in short center field and the one one pitch is fouled away. So Van Heverbeck behind, one and two. So Decato trying to get a 1-2-3 inning here in the top of the second. And there's a grounder to the pitcher and a quick throw to first. And you get the 1-2-3 inning on the 1-3 grounder. And so no runs, no hits, no errors. As you see the replay, nobody left. And so we go to the bottom of the second. And our score still 0-0. Zero, zero. And... Right now, let's talk about the uh, power rankings. And uh, we usually talk about the top five, but uh, let's talk about the top six this time. Yeah, we touched on it a little bit pregame. Uh, you know, we've got top, uh, three out of the top six teams right here in the Central Parish within five to eight miles from each other probably. you got Dutchtown coming in at number one, Santa Mar right behind it, number two, three, four, and five, Pontchartula South Side and West Washita, And then East Ascension comes in at number six. So... You go back to the one year that uh, Nancy Insminger took Dutchtown to the finals, and that year in Sulphur, that was 2015. That was uh, a similar season to uh, this season, at least where the way it's shaping up right now is. The, the final four in Sulphur were Dutchtown, Santa Ma, East Ascension, and the other team that won state. 
So, yeah, could, could, of, could history repeat itself? Yeah, I don't know. I think, and then I think Dust Sound ended up losing right in the same. It, uh, was, it was Sam, Sam Houston. Yeah, Sam Houston. Yep. Yes, it was. Yep. But uh, they, I mean, you, you said it. They. I don't know, man. It, you know, when you get into playoff time, it. One, two, obviously you want to have that by the first round and you want to, you know, all the home field advantage you can get. But uh, it's just a different ball game and anything can happen once you get to that, that uh, spot in the season. Right. And uh, when you're in that one, two spot, the most important thing, because that doesn't matter, you know, it's not like you're give, given a trip to Sulphur, but the, the most important thing is you get to play games at home. Yeah. And that makes a big difference as Landish, Dakota, and Terrio are due up here in the second for Santa Maz. The first pitch from West is a ball. It's Landash 432. Yeah, and shout out to her dad, Stephen, who provides us with a lot of our information that we need to, uh, that we actually talk about up here on on air. Helps us out a lot when he gets, uh, gets us some information about that Lady Gators team. Counts one and one. And it seems like he's been doing it ever since I've been doing broadcasts, and <laughs> I guess that's probably because Landesh has been a starter pretty much my entire career here as a rev broadcaster. She's a veteran, that's for sure. And it's fouled away. Back to the screen. One and two. She leads the team in doubles. It's going to be weird next season when you broadcast these games and people <laughs> like Landesh and Franklin and, Franklin and, and all these Zeller guys are not going to be here yeah. anymore. Yep. And there's a grounder to second. Johnson gets it, throws to first. Four to three for the out. So after the double by Alex Franklin, three in a row retired by Matty West, as you see in the replay. And good grab by Vicknair at first. Now Bailey to Cody comes to the plate for Santa Monica. Another lefty. Another lefty coming in, hitting hitting 413 with five doubles. She knows how to find her way around the base path. And she tried to get that over the third baseman's head. Ooh. And Jenna Blanchard like must Jenna have been Blanchard playing right came, there. We're going to have to see have, that. Must have seen, yeah, it's hard to see because we're blocked by the uh, dugout from our view. But let's mm -hmm. look at the replay. So Blanchard was playing about 10 feet yeah, off the uh, dirt. She's playing deep shortstop right there. Perfect positioning. Good job of uh, setting up the defense by Nancy Ensminger and Dutchtown. Knew exactly what to expect, and that's what they got. So Landesh started the inning with a grounder to second. Dakota flew out to left, and now Terrio is at the plate. And Emily Terrio takes the ball. Two outs, bottom of the second. No score. Dutchtown at Santa Monica. Terrio, 344. Swing and a miss. So one and one to count with two outs in the bottom of the second. Santa got the one, two, three inning in the top of the inning. And right here, if this can be grabbed by the shortstop, Harper Dupree, we get another one, two, three inning as Terrio pops to short. So no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. And after two, no score between Dutchtown and Santa Ma, you're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river, to the lake, with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi-Fi and Metro E. Our best-in-class services are tailored to your needs. Backed by in-house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Advantage Physical Therapy, SCC Heating and Cooling, Tata Law Firm, Raising Pains in Prairieville, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Hollis Orthodontics, 
Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation. Peak Performance Physical Therapy. For their support of our Griffin's Sports Medicine Program. Top of the third. No score between number one, uh, Dutchtown, and number two, Santa Ma. Jeff Porsche, Mike Moeller with you on a beautiful day here in Santa Ma as first pitch is a strike to Anna White. Decato facing White, Mathis, and Bennett, eight, nine, and one. She's retired four in a row. Foul tip. Strike two. Maybe a little tardy on that fastball right there. He might have been on the outer half. Sometimes it looks like they swing late, but that, those balls in the outer half, they're trying to let travel so they can hit that ball the opposite way. Ball low. And count two and one to Anna White. And that's fouled, so she stays alive. Count remains. One and two. In that eight nine spot, Mike, the uh, the the offense is just as good as you see at the top of the lineup as uh, White and Mathis have uh, got some clutch hits that we've seen this yeah, season. Yeah, they, they've done some damage from that eight and nine spot right there. We mentioned it the, the the two games we've done so far. I think it was the two games, but the the first game against Santa Mall anyway. Yep, um, they got a couple of RBIs. Mathis uh, was one of the catalysts in that game as White strikes out. Ball gets away from Rabelais and she throws to Mesh for the out at first. Yeah, we also saw them against uh, East Ascension. They got a number of hits and RBIs and sparked that offense from the from the bottom of the line up there. And the first pitch. To Caroline Mathis, the Dutchtown catcher, is fouled away. And Coach Insminger, I talked to her last couple of days about the uh, the game against Live Oak on Tuesday, and she said that, uh, that Mathis was one of the catalysts in their big comeback. That one is low. In case you didn't know, uh, we were talking about it during the Tuesday night broadcast over at uh, Santa Ma for the baseball game. They were down 6-1. to one. Yeah, through and, like four, maybe even five, right? And uh, I was told that uh, Live Oak hit some routine fly balls and uh, the Dutchtown outfielder slipped a couple of times. There's a grounder foul. So that was the day that it had rained so badly in the morning, and uh, the outfield was slick out of Dutchtown. A couple of the uh, outfielders fell. They fell behind 6-1. to one. But then Mathis led a comeback in the six, and they wound up winning that game seven to six. Both of these teams had close ones on Tuesday, as Santa Ma had a uh, two-one victory over Denham Springs. One-two. Yeah, well that's. I mean, that just kind of shows their discipline, right? I mean, whenever you face with adversity, they didn't panic. I mean, they, I think they were down to their last six to nine outs or whatever, down six to one, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, just kind of chipped away, got themselves right back into the game, and do what they're used to doing. And Mathis will take first. She was hit on the arm by that pitch from Decato. That's the second base runner of the day for the Lady Griffins. And that will take us to the top of the order and Riley Bennett. And we talked about the uh, bottom of the lineup producing. We don't see them produce like that usually. But they're on base, and they're on base again. Now Bennett struck out looking in the first. And the runner's going. And a throw to second, and it gets past the shortstop, Landish, and so a steal. For Mathis. Yeah, from the catcher. Didn't expect that. It's her eighth bag on the year. She's got seven so far. That made her eighth. That throw from Rabelais looked like it was on time, but could not hold on to the bounce. Yeah, just just a little bit a little bit short right there, kind of an in-between hop. Those are the tough ones to pick because you got to get that ball down quick, even if, if, even if you can handle it cleanly and so Dutchtown gets their first runner in scoring position and you got one out and one and two in the batting order trying to pick her up in Bennett and Johnson so Mathis with the hit by pitch and a stolen base and there's a fly ball routine to right and coming in and making the catch is Bailey to Cody for the second out yeah, nice job to get Bennett to fly out right there. I don't think anything's too routine right now to right fielders. You see those right, right fielders, even second baseman, kind of battling that sun. That, 
That thing is directly in the in their eyes. Right when I said routine, I saw her <laughs> kind of look up and uh, kind of check everything real fast, and then she was able to to find the ball and come in and make the catch. As pitch to Johnson fouled away back into left field of the baseball field. Ballpark. Two outs. Top of the third. No score. Runner in scoring position as a ball to Caroline Johnson. She's a 358 hitter. She leads the team in singles, and a single could give Dutchtown the lead right here. That's high and outside. Two and one. Decato had retired five in a row before hitting Mathis. And then Bennett flew out to right. He's fouled away again. One strike away. Decato looks a lot more poised out here than she did in the first game against Dutch Town. She looked like a, a much better pitcher here today. And a swing and a miss, and she gets through the third unblemished as Johnson strikes out. No runs or no hits, no errors. One left on base. Go to the bottom of the third, and it's still no score. Dutch Town at Santa Ma. And lots of seniors on both these clubs. We're going to start by looking at Dutchtown this inning. Yeah, Lady Griffins, if you see there, here's the seniors from left to right. You have Ariel Hayes, Riley Bennett, Caroline Mathis, Maddie West, Harper Dupree, Asia Weaver, and Sydney Dunham. So you got a lot of senior leadership on this team for sure, as a lot of those girls are a lot of the starters. Up. This is an interesting team for Dutchtown because you got some seniors. About half the starting lineup is seniors, and the other half are freshmen and sophomores. So you got a good mix of young and old on this club. Yeah, and we've, uh, you know, when we always say this every year that whenever the seniors, when we do this kind of, you know, the senior photos and everything, we've been saying their, their names for two and three years for a lot of them. They've been here for a long time. But then you just think about it, and, and just even on, on the Lady Griffin side, you, you think they're the freshman and sophomore they have on the field now. They're kind of just replenishing, and, and we'll be just doing the exact same thing in a couple of years whenever they become seniors. Yeah, that's it's always good to have that, that new – crop coming in and if you can get three or four of them in your starting lineup then you never really get too young I yeah guess you, can you say. never have the the, the rebuild or yeah. whatever you know per se exactly so now we're going to see if maddie west can get through the third she has now retired five in a row after the bloop double by alex franklin so she's looked good of course she looked good in her opening game she was a winning pitcher in the uh, seven six victory for dutchtown two and a half weeks ago, and she's going to face eight, nine, and one, Lauren Allen, Brooke Rabelais, and Mackenzie Ellisar. So Lauren Allen coming in. We've seen a lot of players in that spot, designated player. We've seen uh, Riley Moran in there a little bit. We've seen Mackenzie Smith. Today they're working with Lauren Allen. She's been in the lineup a little bit in the last couple of weeks. And a strike call. So number 12, the designated player at the plate. This is only her sixth appearance this season, her sixth game. She's trying to get her third hit of the season. And this is there, and it's 0-2. Took a healthy hack at that pitch, just up out of the zone. Looked like West kind of rose that thing, started top of the zone, maybe kept going a little bit. Allen's a junior. O2 strike looking. Beautiful pitch by Matty West, and Lauren Allen is retired. So one out here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, kind of an eye level thing there. Got her to chase that pitch up in the zone. Got her looking up or whatever, and you just paint down and away. It's all, you know, it's easier said than done. But if you can execute that pitch, 
then it really makes it look like you know what you're doing, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to get them to swing and miss at the, 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 the pitch prior, but then you, even more important than that, you have to execute that next pitch. That's exactly what Wes did. Brooke Rabelais now at the plate with one out, the nine-hole hitter. Strike called. We talked about how Mathis, very productive in that nine-hole. Brooke Rabelais has 22 RBIs on the season in that nine-hole. So both teams are able to get production from the bottom of their lineup. Yeah, it makes you think, well, we kind of know. You don't have to think, really. Oh. And that carbon copy. <laughs> Number nine, they're both catchers. They both get hit by the pitch. Let's see, now all, all she has to do right here is steal a bag, right? Yep. Well, we're going to get a courtesy runner, I think. So let's see. So there's Riley Moran. We've seen her multiple times this season. Now she'll run the base paths with her four stolen bases, so it's definitely an, op an option yep. here. And you're at the top of the lineup, so you may not hear you because Ellisar can usually move a runner or two and get on base herself. Yeah, because Ellisar can pretty much, well, she can pretty much do what she wants. She can handle that bad as anyone we've seen in a few years now for sure. For the first pitch, drops it, and it's fouled away. Back to the screen. So, when Rabelais got hit by a pitch, that ended a six straight retired streak for Maddie West. Now Moran at first, Rabelais at the plate. And drops it foul. So 0-2. Oh you got to love that. I mean, you have Bennett playing like mm -hmm. six feet away from you, and she's still going to challenge her trying to want that ball and beat that throw to first base or maybe even get it by her. Can we get a shot and see where some of the infielders are playing on, on this uh, pitch here? Or you see, maybe see where Bennett's playing at third. She's... She's playing in, in that spot. That's a that's a great shot right there. You see how close she's they little, are. She's a little bit deeper, actually, now with the two strikes probably. You see her kind of backpedaling, and she'll work her way in. But I think she may have been even closer than that. Yeah. With two strikes, the, uh, the bunt is never out of play for LSR. Exactly. LSR, even, you know, in, in the softball world, mm -hmm. you'll still see it a lot more than you do on the baseball side. You want to keep her off base because on deck you got Franklin. Drops it, and that's a foul. Yep. And so she will. She's trying to slap something yeah, by. They'll count. Bennett now. They'll count that as a foul ball. So the count will remain one and two. Moran still at first. Running from Rabelais, and they get her on strikes. As Alasar can't put it down, and uh, that's the fourth strikeout of the day for Maddie West, and that'll bring up Alex Franklin. And that was a big strikeout for West because with Franklin coming to the plate, you don't want anybody in scoring position. They're just going to walk her. Not a surprise. Not a surprise at all. You got to... I mean, she, she got her to hit a kind of lazy fly ball last time, but, I mean, chances are her odds, mm -hmm. percentages, whatever. I mean, she's got 12 bombs on the year, hitting 515, even higher than 515 now after that first at bat. Now, Mesh has four homers on the season. She's the RBI leader. Yeah, no slouch here, but, I mean, you, it, it's got to make you think. You see Franklin with 33 RBIs and Mesh right behind her with 35. These Lady Gators have plenty of traffic on the base. If everyone down the lineup has got that many RBIs, they're scoring a ton of runs. So a tense situation, a number three hitter coming up. She struck out her first time. Runners on first and second. Franklin at first. Moran at second. No score. Bottom of the third. And a strike on that outside corner, and the Santa Maria side did not Ooh. like that one. <laughs> It looked like he was in the chalk. You can right hear here. the groan. Yeah, that was uh, 
Thought he might have expanded that zone outside there a little bit. but Looked like the exact same spot as the previous pitch, as a matter of fact, when that was called a ball. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, we talk about it all the time. If you're gonna if you're going to give a couple inches off the sides, man, just make it be consistent, right, so both yeah. sides kind of know. That one was fouled off of Mathis. Runners cannot advance. One, two. So, touchdown. In a little delicate situation right here, but one strike away from getting out of the inning. Base hit would score one. And that's outside for sure. Two and two. Matty West in the circle, ready to go. And that is popped, and the third baseman is going to get it. Riley Bennett with the catch. And a little tense moment is ended for Dutchtown as they retire the side on a fly ball to the third baseman. So no runs on no hits, no errors. Two left on base. We go to the fourth, no score. Dutchtown at Santa Maria. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river to the lake with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi-Fi and Metro E. Our best-in-class services are tailored to your needs, backed by in-house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Advantage Physical Therapy, SCC Heating and Cooling, Tata Law Firm, Raising Pains in Prairieville, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Hollis Orthodontics, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffin's Sports Medicine Program. We go to the top of the fourth, no score between Dutchtown and Sanama, and Decato with three scoreless innings will face three, four, and five, Jenna Blanchard, Harper Dupree, Maddie Keller. That's fouled back to the screen. We saw a 7-6, kind of a slugfest a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago. This one looks like more of a pitcher's duel here today. Yeah, you saw, I mean, the, the, the first game we did, Dutchtown kind of struck early with it. You know, the home run and pushed a couple of runs across the board and uh, tried to pad that lead a little bit later. And then Santa Maul made a valiant effort to come back in that game, but it, uh, it was extinguished by Abby Fralick at the end there. This one right from Jump Street. Both pitchers are in complete control. And a strike called, one and two. Dutchtown has two hits on the day. And Santa Maria only has one. That one hit was kind of a bloop miscommunication out in right field. But uh, not a lot of hard hit balls today on either side at all as the count remains, one and two. And Decato looks so much better today than she did a couple of weeks ago. She, look like, she looks like she's improving every time she comes out there. Yeah, just a lot of experience. I mean, we saw A.J. Jackson pitch almost every single game the last few years. And, uh, yeah. You know, when you start to get, finally get your chance out there, you want to be able to stay in that circle, right? You want to mm -hmm. be able to compete and give your team a chance to win. And you might put a little more added pressure on yourself than needed. But once, uh, you know, once you have, have had a little bit of success, kind of settle into that role. And it's fouled, and Rabelais holds on to it for strike three. So another strikeout for Decato, so one out in the fourth, and Harper Dupree comes to the plate. And that is the fifth. I'll make that the sixth strikeout on the day for Decato. And the first pitch, that one is blooped into short center field, and the shortstop Landesh is able to make the catch. 
So we've seen a couple of balls kind of blooped out there to center fielder, and the infielders are able to grab it and make the play. Yeah, sometimes you see those balls fall, and whenever, whenever you see those, you know, you kind of get lucky every now and then. You see some of those balls fall. You'd rather them have, have, have that happen, you know, if you're offensively if you have somebody on, on, on base, particularly in scoring position. But these uh, – all these defenders on both sides, we've seen a couple of bloops. So, you know, other than that one in the first inning by Franklin, they've gotten really good jumps on the balls and gotten underneath them in position, the exact spot they're supposed to be in to make a good play. Maddie Keller's at the plate. It's 0-1. She was a strikeout victim in the second inning. Looked like she was thinking about dropping one, and it goes outside. 1-1 one and one is the count. So Blanchard struck out to start the inning. Dupree with the uh, fly to short for the second out. And a swing and a miss. Decato trying to get her fifth straight. Lady Griffin retired. And trying to keep them scoreless. And that is a beauty. Strike three called, caught looking for strikeout number seven. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Bottom of the fourth, and it's no score between Dutchtown and Santa Ma. And you know Santa Ma's going to have some seniors because we've, we've talked about them every year for four years. <laughs> right, and they're looking at them there, Lady Gators from left to right, Emily Terrio, Gracie Bursa J, Mary Beth Zeller, Mackenzie Ellisar, Samantha Landash, and Alex Franklin. And if there's a more successful group of seniors in any sport around here, I'd like to see it. They, uh, they have been outstanding. LSR, Zeller, Landish, Franklin. That's the core of back-to-back -back state championships and a team that is flirting with a third one this season again. Yeah, of all the couple rings they have, they can kind of represent for sure. They're trying to get their uh – I don't know, what do, they, what do you call that in bowling, a turkey? They're, yeah. they're going to try to roll a turkey here and try to get a three-peat and get a, get themselves another ring. Great core of seniors to show those younger players the way. Right. They A lot of them played their freshman year, and uh, I was surprised when they didn't uh, advance all the way their freshman year. A.J. Jackson got the upset. I believe that was in the uh, quarterfinals, and they weren't able to make it to sulfur that season, but they were number one most of the year and didn't – get back, but then they rectify that situation quickly with back-to-back. -back. So Yeah, again, I mean, experience. Mm -hmm. once, you, once you get there and, you you know, you've been in those waters, I don't want to say you, you know, you're more calm when you get there, but you just kind of know what to expect and stay off the panic button just a little bit more. So, Maddie West, who is pitching a gym so far, going to see four, five, and six. Zeller, Landish, and Dakota. I know she's breathing a sigh of relief getting through LSR, Franklin, and Mesh there in a in kind of a jam with no run scored in the third. Zeller struck out looking. That was the third out of the first inning. That one's in the dirt. And the 1-0, 2-0, pitch high. So West falls behind 2-0. Sam Ma with one hit. That was the double by Franklin. Little bloop fly to right field that was misplayed. And there's a strike on that outside corner. Yeah, good pitch right there. You see West... She's been controlling that part of the plate pretty pretty steady through that first three innings. 2-0, that's kind of a go-to pitch right there. You don't want to catch too much white part of the plate. 2-1, fly ball, deep center, and it's in play, and the catch made by Matty Keller. That might be the hardest hit ball we've seen yeah. all day. That ball, that ball jumped right there, too. Good play by Maddie. Made it look easy to see her going down there. Yeah, she got a jump on it right away. Good angle, never a doubt. Ran to the spot, got right underneath it. Easy catch for the first out. And so, one out here in the bottom of the fourth, Sam Landish 
at the plate. She grounded to second, her first at bat to start the second inning. And there's a pop-up to second. Johnson has it in the grass, makes the catch. So we have two outs. Very good. Right quickly. there, you learned you see Johnson go back and take control of that situation right there. I got it, I got it. Maddie Keller right behind her if something happens, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, no miscommunication there. Right. Love Maddie Keller's range. She's, she's, she's all over the field. Hard to get one past her. And with two outs here. Yeah, that's what you know exactly what you want from your center fielder. I don't, that ball's hitting to you know to the right fielder. She's over there backing up, you know, to try to cut off some extra bases if if a ball may get past one of the outfielders. It's kind of always in the right spot at the right time. This is Bailey to Cody with a one strike count. And a strike called. She flew out to left. That was Jenna Blanchard playing in the uh, short left field and made a nice catch. That was in the second inning as well. One one. I believe the counts. <laughs> yeah, counts o, o two. Matter of fact, scoreboard says one two. I think. Uh, the first two pitches were called strikes. I tried to slap that one past the uh, mm -hmm. on-deck circle there. Terrio. Yeah. Going to be heads up. Target right there. And a swing and a miss. And we've got ourselves a pitching duel, ladies and gentlemen. No runs on no hits. No errors. Nobody left. And we go to the fifth no score between Dutchtown and Santa Maria. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river to the lake with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi Fi and Metro E, our best in class services are tailored to your needs, backed by in house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at let'srev.biz. Rev Business. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Advantage Physical Therapy, FCC Heating and Cooling, Tata Law Firm, Raising Pains in Prairieville, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Hollis Orthodontics, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffins Sports Medicine Program. So let's see if the pitching duel holds right here. We go to the top of the fifth, and the no score between Dutchtown and Santa Maria on the first pitch is popped up to second. <laughs> and it's holding as Zeller catches the fly ball, pop up from Brooke Vicknair. She's the leadoff hitter here. I see Vicknair trying to jump on that first pitch. I get something up, just gets underneath it. We've got ourselves a gym right here. And now... Decato was to face Vicknair, Van Haverbeck, and White. So now here's Van Haverbeck. And, oh, nearly stabbed by the second baseman. And we have ourselves a base hit, folks. Good hit by Katie Van yeah, Haverbeck. Great. Even a, a nicer try by Zeller, though. Again, for jumping on that first pitch. and I mean, from our angle, perfect. We can see that ball perfect, right? I think it, I thought it was base hit to right field all, all day long. And all of a sudden, you see Zeller come out of nowhere and almost makes the grab. I believe we're going to see a courtesy runner. And that's going to be Caitlin Hogg, number 32. And now Anna White. And you have that uh, that the deceptively effective 8-9 combo coming up, Mike. And a strike call to White. Now, Hugs over at first. She is 0 for 1 on stolen bases this season, so she hasn't been a threat very much this season so far. Oh, 
one. And she's going this time, and she makes it safely as the throw is high. It's her first bag of the year, right? Yep. I was concerned for a second because she looked back to second, looked back to the home plate, as you see right here. She's going to take a look. Now she, I thought she took a look there, but she did not. It was, it was a little delayed almost. Like yeah. it might have been, may have been a hit and run, or maybe a delayed steal. I don't know if she was going immediately or not, but nonetheless, safe at second. So first stolen base for Caitlin Hogg. Now Anna White can maybe get touchdown on the board if she can get a base hit. Touchdown's going to have two chances. Counts two and two. And you know Mathis can do it on deck, the 362 hitter in that nine spot. Anna White has got a couple of RBIs on our Rev games this season. She won't get one this time, though. And she strikes out. So, second out. That's a big one right there. And now Caroline Mathis comes up. So, Mathis was hit by the pitcher on an inside pitch. And it's fouled away. Hit on the arm. So, now two outs. Mathis needs to get a hit to keep Dutchtown's rally going. That's foul away, 0-2. Kind of a check swing, gets off the bat. So can Decato get a nice pitch right here. And that's high, gets away. Hogs going to third, and she's going to get there standing. Yeah, good read. That ball jumped right back to the catcher Rabelais off that net pretty quickly, but great jump by Hogg right there, paying attention. Yep. Not even an attempt to try to get her out at third. So that's our first base runner on third base here today, and the count remains one and two. Like I said, Mathis 362. And there's a hot shot to second, but grabbed Ooh. by Zeller, and she played her perfectly in the throw to first for the out. It was in the right spot at the right time. No runs on one hit. No errors, and one player stranded at third. No score. Dutch Allen Santa Mall going to the bottom of the fifth inning. And playoffs are just a couple of weeks away, and let's talk about that. Yeah, so we're going to see the format here. You have, you're going to have 26 teams. If you are one of the first uh, top six seeds, you will have a first round by. Seeds seven through 26 will have it. It will be in the by district round, and that will take place on April 13th. Regionals on April 17th. Quarterfinals on the 20th of April. And there you see in Sulphur, the semifinals and finals will take place on April 26th and 27th. Now, you don't want to get too ahead of yourselves, but we're near the end of the season here as there's only a couple of district games left for both of these teams. And they're one and two. Whoever wins today, the loser won't drop most likely. They're probably going to stay one and two. They may, they may trade spots, but if they can hold serve and go the rest of the way and, and not get upset, they should, they should be in – those one-two spots and get those buys in the first round. Yeah, one-two spots are probably on opposite sides of the bracket, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, if in a perfect world, this could be the state championship matchup. I hate to talk too soon, but, uh, right. you know, just early on the season or, or actually mid-season, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of forecasting, if you will, Yeah. what the possibilities could be. Of course, Dutchtown playing for the sweep, and, I, and you know that's got to be in the back of their heads. We may play this team again in the postseason. And, uh, and so it's hard to beat a team three times in the season, and, but I'm sure that they don't even think about that right now. They just want to win here today because if they could, first of all, they ended the 86-game winning streak for Santa Monica District, but if you can sweep them too, I'm sure that would be a, something that they would talk about forever. Yeah, and, and you, you talked about if Santa Monica even if they should win today, 
do you just flip spots? Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, if you, you beat the number one team, the number one team loses to the number two team. I mean, we'd be in the same same scenario, just flip-flop, kind of the reciprocal. Yeah. This is Emily Terrio. You got seven, eight, nine. Terrio, Allen, and Rabelais. First pitch is a strike. Fouled away. 0 and 2. Terrio popped to short in the second for the third out. Terrio 344. Another outstanding hitter. And a strikeout. So that's strikeout number six for Maddie West. And that'll bring up Lauren Allen. And guess what she did her first at bat? She struck out. Caught looking. So that's five in a row retired by West after the intentional walk to Franklin. She had a couple, couple strings of that. Retired yep. five in a row earlier before she... Yep. Hit Rabelais her last at bat. The only base hit she's given up today was that double to Alex Franklin where you had the uh, second baseman, Johnson, thought that White was going to come in and make the play, but she wasn't there, and then it fell for the double. So Santa Maria's bats have been silent so far. It's hard for their bats to stay silent all day, though. And that one is He's low. down. Have been and both pitchers, both Santa Maria and Dutchtown. These pitchers have been really efficient. You know, not a lot of base runners getting ahead in the counts, not going too deep. You know, mm -hmm. you haven't seen too many three-two counts. All these, uh, all the actions have been taking place in the, you know, one-two, oh, two, two-two kind of scenario. And so right now we're going to have a little conference on the mound. That's uh, the assistant coach at Dutchtown, Leslie Marion. She was the former head coach at Denham Springs. She, was, she took Denham Springs to the playoffs last year. She moves over to Dutchtown and to replace Tony Ricca. And Tony Ricca moved on to become the head coach at East Ascension. And she's doing an outstanding job as well. Lots of great coaches around here. Everybody wants to come to AP. Yep, you're right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you do yeah, for, no, the, for I mean, the schools yeah, and for absolutely. the athletics and everything. It's, it's the best place to uh, it's a hot take day. a kid to public schools. Yep. And that's, I mean, the best. And not, that's not even like hyperbole or anything like that. A schools all around. One and one. And do you see a strike here? No, you see a fly ball. And the shortstop's going to get it. And so it'll pop to short for Allen as Dupree makes the catch. Yeah, you see kind of Riley Bennett going over there, but then kind of clears out. Better angle for Dupree right there. And so usually after the conference, you see a strike. That time yep. you saw the out. So usually effective in some capacity. Now the number nine hitter, Rabelais. She was hit by pitch. Both number nine catchers are, have been hit by pitches here today. One of those unusual things. Fouled. There's a hot shot. <laughs> One of the assistants uh, right nearly got pegged. <laughs> right in the dugout. Scatter. Both these teams playing like they have dinner reservations at 7. Been a fast game so far. High and outside. One and one. Bottom of the fifth, no score. One versus two. Strike two. Ooh, changed it up on it a little bit right there. And when you see one versus two, it's sometimes it's not 
It doesn't live up to the hype. This one has completely lived up to the hype so far. Yeah. Although, didn't expect the pitcher's duel. Got to say. Yeah, when you look at the, on paper, when you see these averages, team averages, how elevated they are, yeah. you're thinking you're going to see, you know, the 7-6 game that we saw previously. This one right here has been nothing but pitching. We have seen some pitching gems this week. Tuesday night we had the uh, baseball game between EA and Santa Mar. EA won in extra innings 2-1. to one. We may see fewer runs in this game. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Ball three. So very rare three-ball count. I, just, I jinxed it. I just said we hadn't seen any three-two counts, you know, yeah. not going deep in counts, and then that's, I should keep my mouth shut. Elisar got to a three-two count and then grounded out to the pitcher in the first inning. Ooh, look that at one that ball. is a cue ball to first and a throw in time. Wow. Three to four. Vic Nair does a good job Great picking play. up a weird, a weird English uh, ball right there as you see the replay. And hard to see, but. Ball jumped foul first and then yep. spun back. I think Rabelais thought it was going to be foul. And Vic Nair retires the batter, and it's no runs, no hits, no errors. Top of the six, no score. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river to the lake with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi-Fi and Metro E. Our best-in-class services are tailored to your needs. Backed by in-house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Advantage Physical Therapy, FCC Heating and Cooling, Tata Law Firm, Raising Canes in Prairieville, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Hollis Orthodontics, Pat Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffins Sports Medicine Program. Welcome back to the Rev Game of the Week. No score between Dutchtown and Santa Maria. Top of the six. Mike, if, I, if we're going to see any runs scored, I think you're going to see it in the sixth as uh, – both teams are going to have one, two, and three coming up. I just want to kind of go back to that play we saw at the end there. I, I can't stress how good of a play that was yes. by Brooke Vickner right there. That ball starts foul. It's got, like, unbelievable amount of spin. English, what we call it, you know, kind of yeah. the masse a little bit. But easy to give up on that ball if you're a defender, right? Yep. And we start with a base hit. Riley Bennett with a nice shot. No doubt about it. Yeah, so, again, we saw that, that, for the, the, the last time through the lineup. It started with Vickner when she let off last inning. They they started to try to jump on uh, <clears throat> on Decato a little bit earlier in the count. You see a lot of first pitch swings. That might be the best pitch you get to hit. So why not go ahead and swing it, I guess? I think the sixth inning is going to be the toughest for both pitchers because, like I said, both teams are going to have one, two, and three coming up. The runner's going, and the throw is – on the other side of the bag, and the tag not in time, and now you have another runner in scoring position. It's a close play, but the ball on the other side of the bag right there. Yeah, Rabelais, good jump right there by uh, by Bennett, but all Rabelais could do is, I mean, she, she didn't even try to come up out of her out of her crouch there, just tried to throw something from, a, from her knees. Good throw, just a little late. Fly ball to right, and it's going to be caught by Dakota, and the runner's going to tag and go to third. So sacrifice nine. And one out. Bennett's on third. Blanchard and Dupree coming up, and they'll try to pick her up and score the first run of this game. Yeah, that's actually no sacrifice there. It actually kind yeah, of counts, counts right. against you, but you move the ball, right, you know, yeah. move the you're runner right, over. You're right, you're right. It's kind of, kind of just like that ground ball behind the base runner that moves them over. And that one is not going to be a sacrifice. It's <laughs> popped up. To Zeller. <laughs> Clutch. Clutch pitch right there. And, and again, they're yeah. jumping on everything right again, now. Again, they're, they're, they're trying to get to get to Decato early in the count. Hadn't, you know, hadn't been real successful getting deeper in the count with two strikes. Makes it a lot tougher. 
And a strike on the inside corner to Dupree. This is where you want a senior. 377 hitter. Trying to pick up her 19th RBI of the season. 01. And there's a base hit, and the first run is scored, and Dutchtown takes the lead. Wow, Dupree has got that ball right over the center cut of the plate right there. Hit it right back where it came from. Laser right back up the middle, right over the glove of Decato. Pick up the, the RBI and the first run of the game. So Riley Bennett crosses home plate, and that was two no doubt about it singles right up the middle of this inning. And Dutchtown leads one to nothing. Maddie Keller is going to be replaced at the plate right now by Ariel Hayes. Yeah, it looks like the Lady Griffin's trying to look like maybe for something in the gap here. Yep. Got a little bit more power bringing in Hayes. She comes in. I mean, she's got 13 RBI. She's got three bombs, five doubles on the season. We saw one last week when they played East Ascension. She hit a bomb to dead center field. Yeah, she did. She's got some, some power. She actually barreled every single ball she hit. I think she had four knocks that game. Yeah, She, she uh, barreled every single one of them. I remember that she was a triple away from the cycle. That's Coach Amy Petrie is going to go to the circle and have a conference and you 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 brought it up and you were you did a great job of noticing that because I, I really wasn't paying that much attention to it like you were but it looks like Dutchtown's fortunes have changed when he started jumping on the first or second pitch yeah and then uh you know I'm kind of thinking right here do you um do you steal Dupree right here try to get her in in, in, in scoring position or do you I mean she's got seven base seven stolen bases on the season here mm -hmm. do you, you know and if she doesn't make it do you, do you take the bat out of Hayes's hand or do you kind of just try to rely on Hayes to hit something in the gap right here and let Dupree try to score from first well I'm looking here at Hayes's statistics and she has seven singles five doubles and three homers so she has as many extra base hits as she or more extra base hits than she has singles right and extra bases would probably score her from first with two outs. Yeah, two outs. You're going to go on contact. Doesn't look like she's going anywhere. Rabelais lost it for a second, and Dupree just stayed at first. Three forty-one hitter. Takes a ball. Good, uh, good eye right there. Thought about it for a second. Yeah, those are the ones that look so good. They're, they're so easy to see, right? They're eye level. You think you can get to them, but they're by you before you can even start your swing. Good take by Hayes right there. Three and oh. So Hayes with a three ball count. Dutchtown scored the first round of the game. Moments ago, Harper Dupree with an RBI single. There's a strike. It's one nothing. Dutchtown leads Santa Ma. And everybody was jumping on the first pitches. Hayes has not even swung the bat at this point yet. And she's going to get first base. And that'll give Brooke Vicknair a shot to get a run in. She's 0 for 2 today. She's due. 0 for 2. She comes in hitting 316. She's got 12 RBIs. She's knocked in a couple runs this year. She'd love to pick up a little insurance run for her team right here. So at this point, with a runner at second and two outs, Dupree will likely score on anything hit to the outfield as a hit. You have a courtesy runner for Hayes. I, I believe that's going to be Keller coming yeah. back in. So, first pitch is a ball. So, Keller back in the game at first. Dupree, who had the go-ahead RBI, is at second. Riley Bennett has already scored this inning. It's one nothing Dutchtown. And that's popped up, and the first baseman is going to get it. 
Mesh. Easy for Mesh. Makes the play for the third out. But Dutchtown scores the first run of the game. One run on two hits. No errors. Two left. Then go to the bottom of the six and no yes, score. We, we RCB, one one up. nothing. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, 1-0. But yep. we, we have coming up later on the Rev game of the week. This is going to be our last regular season softball game. We're going to stick with baseball Towards the end of the season, you'll see on the 2nd of April, we're going to travel to Dutchtown, and Santa Mall is going to go there to play. And then we'll do the same thing, or same two teams, except we'll travel back here to Santa Mall to see that matchup. And then on the 11th of April, we'll travel to East Ascension as the Griffins will take on the Spartans. And Jimmy Frederick will join you for those three games. They're going to be live streamed on Rev Sports 1 YouTube channel, and then they're going to be replayed on uh, Sundays and Wednesdays on the Rev TV 4. This is my last uh, regular season game. I'll be back for the playoffs, but uh, y'all are going to have a, a great series between Santa Monica and Dutchtown. They were 3-4 and four Tuesday night, then both of them lost. Yeah, both of them dropped a game. And so the, I believe they're somewhere like 6-7 and seven at this point, so they haven't dropped very far. So it's still going to be a, a top 10 showdown most likely next week yeah that's still first time through the uh through the district Mm -hmm. well you can't say that really because they play back to back but about halfway through district play i guess now dutchtown is gonna get live oak before that so they uh they have their work cut out for them this weekend and uh i believe santa ma gets denim springs So now you're going to get one, two, three on the other side. And Elisar, who is 0 for 2, so she's due, takes a ball. Yeah, a little different environment now here for West. You're pitching with a lead 1 to 0. You know, it's not like a, a huge cushion. Nope. Well, let's see if she'll waver. Still got to make your pitch. You still got to execute. Stick with the game plan. You don't want to put her on base and have Franklin coming up behind her. If you... Uh, if you can get her out, Franklin comes to, pl- to the plate. The worst she could do is tie the game. And Elisar, once she gets on base. Could likely be a triple. Yep. She's got 26 bags, <laughs> and so, so you know she's going to be a distraction. Right. Swing and a miss. It looked like, that, looked like she's going to try to bloop it over mm-hmm. the uh, left side of the infield. And that slap right there, trying to let it get deep. Just a little bit tardy. So one, two. Outside. Good eye right there. That ball just probably a ball off the plate outside, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that was a close one. We saw one in a similar spot called against Santa Ma, and uh, that caught the ire, I guess, of the uh, <laughs> Santa Ma crowd. And uh, that time, uh, the call was in their favor. 2-2. Oh, so close. Good eye, though. <laughs> Trying to get that outside corner. That's some pretty good... Uh Pretty good pitches to take right there with two strikes yep. in that situation. I know your leadoff hitter, she's got a great idea of that zone. If she gets on, this could change everything. And fouls it away. Like we said, Alex Franklin with the 12 homers is on deck. You don't want to put her at the plate with a runner at first. Drops one to the pitcher. Quick throw. Ooh, bobbled it for a second and gets the out. Wow. And Great you recovery. Just, you just bobbled that for like one-tenth of a second, and she nearly beat it out. My goodness. Look right here on the replay. You see it? No, not quite, but... Uh, but, yeah, yeah. she nearly uh, – I mean, just just a little twitch right there. Great play by, by mm-hmm. West right there. I mean, that's so easy to panic. I mean, if you just panic like a millisecond, you've got no shot. She did kind of 
Ball got stuck in her glove a little bit right there, but still made a great, quick, strong throw for that first out. Huge and, first out. And that's that's hard to do because you know what's on the line right here. Because you put her on first, like I said, Franklin at the plate, that could change everything. Now we'll see if Franklin can tie it with one swing. You know she can. She is one for one with the double and a walk. One out, bottom of the sixth. Dutchtown scored first here in the top of the six, and now Santa Ma trying to even things up. It's one nothing. Lady Griffins leading the Lady Gators. Strike call framed perfectly by Mathis. Good shot right there, Maddie West. Been pitching her heart out today, as has Braley Decato. We talked about it. We were across the fence there two nights ago, and we saw a great pitching matchup over there as well. And that's a ball. Two and one. Alex Franklin, if she can get her 13th home run, this game will be tied. There and that is. might be it. My goodness. Good. Tie game. That, that, I, A.J. Jackson hit one out there toward the uh, temporary buildings last year that My went goodness. just as far. But, that man, ball. that's a bomb. Center cut got the head to the ball. Wow. That ball bounces off the top of the T buildings back there. I see somebody on the porch out there wondering what in the world just happened. She tied it up. You called it. I mean, it's, it's very important to keep LSR off the base. That could have easily been a two-run homer, right? And absolutely. I don't know if uh, Santa Ma's baseball field could have uh, held, held that, that one. one. My goodness, that was a bomb. One to yep. one. One to one. Back to the same score we had last inning. So chalk one up to me. I said if there's going to be runs, it's going to be in the sixth inning. Yep. This has been a classic so far. Now Mesh. So that's the second hit of the game for the Lady Gators, both of them from Alex Franklin. We're tied. Swing and a miss. So one and one. Mesh struck out and pop to third. And that's a base hit over to third baseman's head, Riley Bennett. And Mesh gets on base. And now we have a little rally for the Lady Gators. Yep. Nice at bat right there by Mesh. You see West trying to stay away primarily to her. She stays on that pitch, lets it travel deep a little bit, pokes that ball in the left field instead of being out front and rolling over. Now Riley Moran will run the bases. Coach Ensminger talking things over with the home plate umpire. We may be seeing Fraley come in, and yes, we are. So we have a pitching change for Dutchtown, and we'll keep it here and talk about that. Maddie West for five and a third innings couldn't Phenomenal. have done any better. Her gave up one hit, which was kind of a miscommunication double. And then you gave up the bomb to Franklin, and then the base hit to Mesh. So yeah. Kind of ran out of gas pretty quickly. Uh, know, the bottom line, phenomenal job. I mean, you, you hold the, the, the number two team in the state to one run through five-plus innings. That's uh, it's more than you can ask for. And now you're going to see Abby Fralick, who got the save. And she's in here. 
in a tie game, so she won't be getting the save. She could get the win. Yeah, if she's going to come in, she, this will be her 17th game pitched. She's got 64 innings on the season, 2.19 ERA. She's got seven wins and two losses with 68 strikeouts and 24 walks. And she's going to face, with one out, Zeller and Landish. And Moran is going to go to first and run for Mesh. Now, Moran has four stolen bases on the season. And this is a situation where you might see her going. Yeah, with one out, try to get herself in the the scoring position. So Zeller struck out, flew out to center. One versus two. Tie game, bottom of the sixth. Strike called. Delay called from the home plate umpire. And one of the things you see from uh, <laughs> from the pitcher right there is some heat. Yeah, she came in throwing fire in that first matchup. She uh, got a strikeout to end the game. And that was high. Mathis looking Moran back to first. Well, I'm not sure that wasn't intentional. You saw Fralick kind of peel off right there like she might have thought uh, Moran was going to steal there. I will say an unintentional, intentional pitch out maybe or just a good pitch to try to give Mathis a throw on. I'm going to agree with you on that one. And there's a base hit. That's going towards the gap. And the runner's going to third. It gets to the wall. They're waving her around, and there's going to be no play, and Santa Maria takes the lead. As a stand-up double from Mary Beth Zeller. And three straight base hits, and Santa Maria is three outs away. Yeah, Zeller hit that pitch very hard. You see it again right here, right off the barrel. Nothing the second baseman Caroline Johnson can do, and that ball gets all the way to the wall. Moran flying around third base to score that second run to put the Lady Gators ahead. So three hits in a row. You have the homer from Franklin, single from Mesh. Then Moran came to run the bases. Zeller doubled to the gap all the way to the wall, and Moran scored. It's 2-1, to one. and you have a runner at second, Zeller, who fell down momentarily <laughs> and Mathis thought about going back to second and see if he can double her up but could not. Zeller picks up her 21st RBI on the season you, you see she's I mean you have Franklin with 33 mesh with 35 Zeller with 21 couldn't catch up to the heat there and Landash with 26 that's your that's your first your, your two through five hitters right there at some point, somebody is going <laughs> to. They're, they're getting on base. There's a lot of traffic. In. Yep. And that just tells you how incredible Maddie West was to get through five and a third and give up one hit. But Santa Ma, this is why Santa Ma has the reputation and the championships because they're never out. And it's like. Dutchtown took the lead, and they woke up. Yeah, I mean, even in that in the first game we did it, they were down six to one, and in the blink of an eye, it was oh no, it was seven seven, seven, seven to two. two. The same, you know, yep. and then in the blink of an eye, it was seven to six with a chance to to tie that game up. Right. It's fouled away. Yeah, no panic, no die on either team. Right. You know, neither neither one of these teams so is ever going to give up. So what's at stake here today? We we've talked about it. Potential number one power rating, uh, potentially a tie, a virtual tie in the district, although Santa Maria would technically be half a game behind. As there's a grounder to second, a runner will move to third, and it's Johnson to Vicknair. And that's what Santa Maria does, advance the runner even on an out right there. Yeah, productive. That's, that's what you want to see. Yeah, it was an out, but it's a productive out. And even if it's from, you know, from second to third to uh, – to just advance one base, I mean, still, that, that runner on third just just makes you a little bit more tight, you know, on the defensive side, thinking they're only, you know, that far away from scoring. And so 
if Zeller can cross home plate, it will make it a 3-1 game. As Dakota has it and it gets away and the runner was going. And that's exactly what I'm talking there you about. Go. That's that's why it looks like, I mean, it's a productive out. You, you get the runner over from second to third. You don't pick up an RBI. It goes against your batting average. But, you know, if you, if you know the game, you know that's exactly what can happen right there when you get them, you know, just one base away from scoring. And you, you saw her, you saw in the shot she was she was several feet up, off the bag she was yep. anticipating something and it got in the dirt and Mathis couldn't get it and it and it took a it took a high high bounce I guess and uh, that was enough to get her across home plate and it's three to one and there's a base hit off of two gloves and the Cody will hold it first and so I guess that's that's one that uh. Nearly and out twice there. You see off her glove, then it goes to Johnson, it goes off of her glove. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think if, if, if Freilich doesn't get a glove on there, that ball's right up the middle for a base hit. I don't yeah. think Johnson even gets a glove on no, that. She right. kind of redirected it. You you're know, right. gave her a little bit of a chance, but not not so much. So that is now the fourth hit this inning after only getting one in the first five and a third. So, again, to kind of finish what's at stake here, Santa Mar will be a half game back if they win here today. And right now they lead 3-1. to one. The reason they're a half game back is because the game last week against East Ascension has not been replayed yet. It will be replayed. And at that point, if Santa Mar beats EA, then they would be tied. Right. And I just want to point out, you mentioned coming into the inning six, both teams had one, two, three coming up, right? Yep. So if it was going to have a chance, they were going to try to do it in the sixth inning. And, you got to realize, like, this This is the third time through the lineup now, too. They, mm -hmm. They've seen kind of every pitch as they've, they, you know, been in a couple situations, know what each other's pitch or go-to pitch is. Might be just have a little bit better idea of what to look for. And there is a slow roller to first, and Vic Nair will step on the bag, first base unassisted. And you have three runs for the Lady Gators on four hits. No errors, one left. We go to the top of the seventh, and Santa Mar will be playing for the win. They lead 3-1. to one. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river to the lake with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From Internet and hosted phone to managed Wi-Fi and Metro E, our best-in-class services are tailored to your needs. Backed by in-house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Advantage Physical Therapy, FCC Heating and Cooling, Tata Law Firm, Raising Pains in Prairieville, Ross Downing Buick, GMC, Hollis Orthodontics, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffins Sports Medicine Program. Santa Ma playing for the win here in the top of the seventh. They lead Dutchtown 3-1. to one. It was scoreless after five, then the Dutchtown scored one in the six, took the one nothing lead. Then Santa Mar exploded, got the home run from Alex Franklin, and then got two more, and now they lead three to one. And now you're going to see seven, eight, nine. That's what you love to see if you are the team in the field. That's Van Haverbeck, White, and Mathis. And that's a shot. Wow. Here they come, the bottom of that Griffin the lineup, wall. that Lady Griffin lineup is potent. And again, what do they do? Which pitch do they jump on, Mike? first pitch. That first pitch. We saw Van Haverback hit that first pitch down that right field side. Her last at bat, and this one she gets on the inner half and turns that to the left field wall quick. And so we'll see Hogg come in most likely. So Hogg waiting as Coach Hensminger goes to the umpire and makes the switch. And now Anna White. She's due 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. And then Caroline Mathis after that. And you know what she can do. 
Looking ahead to Mathis, she has two home runs on the season already. And she swings it too. Yep. She doesn't get cheated. Let's see. I believe we have a pinch hitter here. This is Ella Pontiff coming in for White. Number three, foul tip. So this is Ella Pontiff, number three. So this is Pontiff's first appearance today. She's a junior. Lefty. Strike call. 0-2. Oh, 2 oh, two. You see Bradley Decato not phased at all by that leadoff double. She knows that run really, I mean, you know, in her mind it doesn't mean much. It's not the, it's not the tying or go-ahead run. Her job right now is to get out. And there's a shot to short, and it's misplayed, and everybody is safe as Landish had to backhand it, and she could not come up with it. Yeah, I think that's going to go as a hit. That's a hard-hit ball to the backhand side. I don't even know with the – with it being a left-handed hitter, she's getting out of the box super fast. I don't even know if Landash would have had a chance to make a play on that at first base. Would have kept the runner at second for sure, so you would probably have first and second no out instead of first and third. Yeah, so like you just pointed out, Hogg running for a fan, Haverbeck gets the third on the infield hit. And now Caroline Mathis. She was one of the heroes of the first Dutchtown Santa Maw game. She was hit by a pitch, grounded out to second. 362 hitter, two home runs on the year. And now you're going to have a conversation in the circle. Maybe Daryl Landry out there talking to the pitchers. Pitcher. Yeah, I wouldn't expect uh, Decato to necessarily be pulled here. Just yeah, gonna... kind of just a calm down. Hey, this is a situation. That runner at first is the one we need to kind of pay attention to. Calm down. Try to get the hitter, get one out. She has pitched a beauty so far. And uh, she gave up that one run on the RBI base hit by Dupree that scored Bennett in the sixth. But she's in an opportunity to get redemption from – the first game and get the win right here and this is kind of what we saw in the bottom of the sixth when you uh, not a lot of hits in this game but then all of a sudden Dutch County erupts for two hits in a row and yeah. they had they had th three hits in the six as well so but now the uh, offense that we expected all along has arrived here in the final two innings yeah I mean this game was completely on lockdown through five innings and you mentioned both teams are going to have one through one two three coming up to lead to start that sixth inning and third time through they kind of like what they're seeing and they're putting some good swings on these pitches and Mathis takes a ball Anna White is back in at first so she is running replacing Pontiff who got the base hit First and third, nobody out. Van Haverbeck doubled. Pontiff singled. Ball two. Usually, you see the pitcher kind of bear down after a visit to the mound, but this time we see a 2-0 count. And after Mathis, you get 1-2-3 back coming up again. And that's low and inside, 3-0. Tense moments. Tying run is at first. Go ahead run is at the plate. Strike called. It's 3-1 Santa Ma. All runs in this game were scored in the sixth. After five scoreless. And it's a ball. Bases loaded, no outs. Ball four and bases loaded. And Riley Bennett. She has two home runs on the season. Not necessarily swinging for the fences here. Base hit could score two. Extra bases could give them the lead. This is, this is a carbon copy. You had to come back. <laughs> For Santa Maria, that ended up just short. Now you have a Dutchtown potential comeback here as that's a ball. And you can't walk another batter. 
or else it's going to get to 3 2. Yep, no place to put him. One for three on today for Riley Bennett, hitting 451. She singled and scored and had a steal in the sixth. Oh, she was going for it right there. <laughs> she she smelled the bounds right there. Hey, yep. good pitch, man. You see something, take a whack, right? That's exactly what she did. This is so much like the other game, except it's a little bit lower scoring. And there's a base hit. One run scores. It's stopped by the center fielder. The runner's going. She slips, and she's going to score anyway. And we are tied. 3-3. Three, three. On the double by Riley Bennett. Second and third. Nobody out. See that ball almost gets to the fence right there. Good job by LSR cutting that off. If he gets to the fence, another run scores. That would have cleared the bases. And Dutchtown fortunate there because when Rant Anna White rounded third, she slipped. Nearly fell, but she was able to stay on her feet. And now that winds up tying the game, and we're going to get the pitching change. And uh, the same thing we saw in the uh, exactly. in, in this bottom of the six where you had – Basically, an outstanding pitching performance, and he just ran out of gas completely. Yep. And so, let's see, who is on the mound? Is this McKenzie Smith? Who is this? this? Number th no. I don't remember 30. Is that Hebert? Haley Hard Hebert. To see. Is that Haley Hebert? Haley Hebert. All right, there you go. Haley Hebert. Yeah, she's uh, wearing number 30 today. Okay, that threw me off because yeah. she's typically number 11. Right. <laughs> so this, this is going to be her 10th game pitch. She's got 19 innings on the season with a 2.14 ERA. She's got two wins, zero losses with 23 strikeouts and 10 walks. So Bear replaces Decato, who did so well and looked like she was in a position for the win here in the seventh but just could not get anybody out in the top of the seventh. And now Dutchtown is in a position where they can take the lead. Nobody out second and third tie game. And Johnson at the plate. Third base playing in. Ball low. Got to love that situation coming in if you're a pitcher, right? Tie game. Runners on second and third. No outs. Go get them. Thanks a lot. Yeah, good luck. Man. Ball two. Dutchtown, you got a double from Van Haverbeck, you got a single from Pontiff, you got a walk to Mathis, and then a double for Bennett. And we are tied. And there's the first strike from Abair. Dutchtown only had five hits going into the seventh. Swing and a miss. Jenna Blanchard on deck. Inside, full count. Waited for a second there. Three, two. Swing and a miss, and that's a big first out right there. And Abair comes in and gets a strikeout for the first out of the inning. Now coming to the plate, Jenna Blanchard. Runner still at second and third. Bennett is at second. Mathis is at third. A base hit would give Dutchtown the lead. Strike. Yeah, Abair is uh, she 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 kind of racks up the strikeouts here. She's only got 19 innings pitched with 24 punch outs, so she's striking out more than one hitter in the inning. Probably a good decision right here. Runners on second, third. You need a strikeout from whoever you have in the circle. And that's in the dirt. A great stop by Rabelais. That kept the uh, go-ahead run from crossing. Can't can't tell you how important that one was. You had Mathis at third, who has pretty good speed for a catcher. She stole a base earlier today.
fouled away and two strikes now, count one and two. A good, good swing right there by Blanchard, just missed it. And under the hair, when you see the foul ball go back with just a little bit of velocity, means they were kind of just, just missed it. Right on time, just missed it. High. Two and two, two and two, one out, second and third. Two runs are in for Dutchtown. We are tied in a classic. Fouled away. Ooh. You don't see that often. You just hit, hit the light pole. <laughs> yeah. I was looking for it to go in the left center field of the baseball field. The, uh, the first five innings took about an hour and ten minutes, and the last <laughs> inning and a half have taken about 40. So much for those reservations. Swing and a miss and another strikeout. Back to back for Haley Abair. Another pitch right there. Fastball up top part of that strike zone. If you're not cheating to get to that pitch, you're probably not going to get to it. And contact from either of those probably scores a run. That is so important. Now Harper Dupree needs a hit. Swinging that's hard the, right there. That's the one I'm talking about, that foul ball. Straight back with some velocity. Dark, uh, Dupree just missed that pitch right there. So now how the fortunes have changed. See if Bear tries to go up top part of the zone, maybe a little out of the zone again. Yep. One and one. It's a little bit too tall right there. Right idea. It's not quite as appetizing, and it's never a strike. You tend to not get many waves at it. One and one, two outs, two, second and third. Two and one. First base is open. That's the pitch right there. When you have two strikes, we've seen both touchdown hitters swing and miss at that pitch. Now, yeah. if, if she did get to first, you would see Maddie Keller. She's in the on-deck circle, and it's three and one. Keller, Ariel Hayes pinch hit for her last time she came to the plate. Or last time she was due up, I guess you should say. Three, one. And there's a strike. I think Dupree tried to sell it there by backing know, up a little bit. That's a great pitch right there. Absolutely painted that inside corner. No chance. You're looking for that pitch right there, 3-1. Ball four, and now. Tried to pull the string on that one. Didn't get Dupree to bite. Maddie Keller has a chance to be the hero. 394 hitter. She's actually a higher hitter for average than Dupree. Base hit could score two. We're tied. Either going to have a third out or a Dutchtown lead here. And there's a strike. Or a walk. Base is loaded. Nowhere to put her. Keller's got nine walks on the season. Swing and a miss. So Dutchtown got one in the six. Then Santa Maria answered with three, and Dutchtown has answered with two in the seventh, and we are tied. And now two outs, bases loaded, and a strikeout, three of them for Haley Abair, and she puts out the fire as you get two runs on four hits, on three hits, and three left. No errors, and we go to the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, great job, great job right there by 
Hey, Bear. I mean, we talked about she's she's a strikeout pitcher. That's exactly what you need if, if you're Santa Mar in that situation. Runners on second and third, no outs. You know, you don't want to, you know, fly ball or any contact probably pushes at least one run across the board, and you get Hey Bear to come in there, punch out the side, and strand everyone. And now we go to the bottom of the seventh, tied, and uh, are we going to get back-to-back games with uh, extra innings here at Santa Mar? That's the potential scenario here as Abby Fralick is going to continue her relief appearance. You see and, the crowd uh, there. We talked about it earlier. No one has left as this game has been phenomenal yep. thus far. The weather's great. Great game. Great crowd. And nobody has been disappointed. We've had two beauties. You couldn't have picked two better games in a week this week as both of them at Santa Monica East Ascension beat Santa Monica Baseball 2-1 to one in eight innings. And now you're in the bottom of the seventh tie game, softball between Dutchtown and Santa Monica. And when you look at, look at what's going to happen here, it's really critical for Freilich to get those first two outs because she's going to start off with eight and nine with Allen and Rabelais, and then you get to LSR and Franklin. Right. So yep. you cannot put one of these two. You can't afford to put one, either of these on base. And we'll see what happens. Franklin would be hitting fourth this inning, just to put that in the back of your head. <laughs> I don't think they'll ever pitch to her again, <laughs> unless the bases unless, are loaded. Unless the bases are loaded, yeah, with the winning run on third. And there's a bouncer to first, and they're going to have to flip to the second baseman covering. Oh. Good job by Caroline Johnson. So that's three yeah. to four. Nice play. Good aggressive play right there, too, by Vic Nair. Go get that ball. Don't, you know, don't kind of get caught in between Johnson, get it, Vic Nair, get it, or whatever. She, she was aggressive. She went and got there. Johnson knew she had to get the first base. Good flip for the first out. Now, Brooke Rabelais, she was hit by a pitch, and then she went three to four on that little uh, nubber cued down the uh, first baseline, you may recall. One out, bottom of the seventh, tie score, 3-3. Three, three. It was scoreless after five, and then both teams erupted. And you see down in the uh, left side of our screen, Coach Ensminger may be making a change. I don't see anything any different. She may have been just pointing something out. Yeah. There's been no defensive changes that I see either. Anna White's still in the game, and Caroline Mathis and and the center fielder are still all, all out there. They've, they've been pinch hit for her. And the first pitch is a strike. A little delayed call there. I thought it was a strike, but I didn't want yeah. to say it. That's how he's been doing it all day. I thought, yeah. you know, some of the pitchers are like, man, where's that? And about three seconds later, you see him raise the hand. Sure he's given the verbal early. 0-1. 1-1. LSR and Franklin are due up. Just off the plate, just outside. Two and one. One out. Allen grounded to first, the throw to the second baseman covering. And there's a strike. Swing and a miss. Right down Broadway right there. A little heat on it. Number one, Dutchtown. Number two, Santa Monica. Jeff Porsche, Mike Moeller bringing it to you. We're two outs away from extra innings, potentially. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. 
And that's fouled away. Good job by Ravelle right there. That's a really good pitch down in the zone on that outside black, just trying to stay alive with two strikes. Dutchtown looked like they were going to take the lead in the top of the six. They got two runs in and tied it. Had second and third with no outs. And then Abear struck out the side. Borderline right there. Probably could have been called. Top of the zone strike right there. 3-2. And you want to keep her off the base pass with LSR. <laughs> <clears throat> Huge pitch right here. So LSR is on deck. Strike three. And mission accomplished. You got eight, nine out. And so you got LSR coming to the plate with nobody on. Exactly what you, I mean, if you're afraid like right there, it's, you know, you, you talked about it early in this inning. Get, get eight, nine out. Try not, as hard as you can not to have any traffic on the base when this lineup flips. And that's exactly what she did. Made a great pitch on the outside corner right there. Elisar has not reached base today. It's not very often that you say that as there's a strike. So she's way overdue right here. Yeah, I think she got on base like 14 times in that one game. We yeah. Were watching. Was, I think she reached like eight or nine times in a row she, in our broadcast. Yeah, she was all over the base path. 0-1, oh two outs, and that's a ball outside. Yeah, a little down, too, a little out of the zone. And, of course, you have the infield playing way in. Second baseman and third baseman are bracketing Freilich. Dupree is deep. Right, too. Yeah. Let off on that one. Good pitch, yep. Let up. Changed it up on her right there. Like LSR had it. Maybe gave up on it a little bit early. Kind of froze her. Or well, maybe she was baiting her into trying to get another one of those pitches. Yep. <laughs> and a swing and a miss, and we're going to extras again at Santa Mall. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. We go to the A, 3-3, Dutchtown and Santa Maria. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river, to the lake, with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi-Fi and Metro E, our best-in-class services are tailored to your needs. Backed by in-house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at letsrev.biz. Rev Business. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Advantage Physical Therapy, SEC Heating and Cooling, Tata Law Firm, Raising Pains in Prairieville, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Hollis Orthodontics, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffins Sports Medicine Program. And extra innings again at Santa Ma. Tuesday we had extra innings in baseball between EA and Santa Ma. Now we have extra innings between Dutchtown and Santa Ma in baseball. What else would you expect from 1-2, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like we said, this game was, I mean, in complete lockdown through five innings. All of a sudden, these bats, third time around, kind of came alive. Both teams pushed across three runs, deadlocked at three after regulation. I hope Rev is paying us by the inning this week. <laughs> so, Vic Nair, Van Haverbeck, and White, seven, eight, or six, seven, eight, due up for Dutchtown. Vic Nair fouls it away. Haley Abair on the mound replaced Decato in the seventh and saved the day for the Lady Gators. No outs, runners on second and third. Went strikeout, strikeout, walk, strikeout. 
And in the seventh, I talked about it earlier, basically if you make contact, you score a run. They could not make contact. I mean, Bear couldn't have done a better job, right? I mean, right. That's, I mean, best case scenario, you come in and punch out the side, and that's exactly what she did. 0-2 and a ball. Top of the eighth, Dutchtown three, Santa Mall three. And the count evens up, two and two. There have been a couple of moments where Haley has, uh, Haley Abair's thrown some balls. Of course, she's got some heat that Dutchtown has not been able to catch up to yet, but she's thrown a lot of pitches in her appearance so far. And that's a slow roller to third. They're going to have to hurry and cannot make a play, and I think that may be called foul. Yeah, hit it off her foot, I think. Yep. Sounded like it anyway. That's kind of the sound it made. Yeah, and uh, the first base umpire says it hit her thigh. And so it looked like that, perhaps. Prize thought Franklin was still going to throw that ball. He actually taught to go through, con continue the play, right? Right. Just in case the ruling doesn't go in your favor. 2-2, two -two, nobody out. That's the count, our score 3-3. Three -three. Foul away. Vic Nair has popped to second, popped to second and pop the first. Due for a hit here. 316 hitter for the Lady Griffins. And that is going to fall for a hit. And Vic Nair gets on base for the first time today. With the base hit to Right center. Good battle right there. Got that pitch inside. Kept kind of inside out of that pitch right there. Didn't get jammed. Just stayed inside. Let it travel and muscled that ball into right center for a base hit. And we're going to get a courtesy runner. That's Parker, Parker LaDuff. LaDuff. And so Van Heverbeck, who roped a double down the left field line to start the seventh inning rally is going to come to the plate. Or maybe not. I see Bree Vickner with a bat, so Van Heverbeck will not bat here. Hmm. She was two for, his last, for her last two. You playing for uh, playing for a sacrifice right here, maybe, I don't Mike? Know. Or are you trying to give Laduff a chance, maybe a pitch or two, to try to swipe that bag and then then bunt her over? Or? I'm guessing you're playing for a sacrifice right here. Yeah, it's going to be uh, – I mean, this is Bree's seventh plate appearance. She's hitting 333. She's got a couple hits and six at-bats. So let's see. I'm guessing she's going to square. Looks like the infield agrees with me as now they're bracketing the pitcher at first and third. And the runner's going, and a throw not in time. Stays on the bag. Nearly overran that for a second there. Yeah. So there's a stolen base for Duff, her first of the season. So that throws the sacrifice out. Well, you could still do it and move to the third. So now let's see if she's got she the green light. She didn't square at all on that pitch right there. Maybe she was not trying to give it. Yeah, there you go. And oh. it gets away, and they're going to third, but I think it was a foul tip. I think it was, was it? Hmm. Yeah, foul tip, strike. So they're going to double check that. We're going to talk it over, and it, and LaDuff has already moved back to second. 
So count is one and one. Debris Vicknair. So, looked like made contact with the home plate umpire. Give him a little second to shake it off. Yeah. Yep, hit his uh, shin. That hurts. Ouch. Looks like we're ready to go. Yeah, that's painful. He's going to have a purple spot on his leg in the morning. So that's a foul ball. LaDuff moves back to second. She got the second on the steal. She's courtesy running for Vicknair, who got a big sip. And the runner's going to third, and they caught, caught everybody by surprise. Mm -hmm. Is that a ball or a strike? Looked like a good pitch on the inside. I don't know if right there is LaDuff just swipes second and third base in three pitches. Wow. Looks like a strike was called. Close play. Same scenario they were in last inning. So one, two, and the go-ahead run is at third. But it's not going to be Bree Vickner. She strikes out. And now here's Anna White's chance. Pontiff hit for her and got a base hit. Her last at bat. White's over two. Ball low. Very intense. <laughs> this is so good. Absolutely. We either have a close game or we have a 10 run rule. <laughs> and I'm glad we have the close one today. It's yeah. one and one. That pitch just above the hands of White. See White kind of hands dip below that ball. And there's a bouncer to the pitcher, and there's a play at the plate. Hey. Safe. She got under there, it looked like. She did. I, I believe she got there. And Dutchtown takes the lead. On the fielder's choice for Anna White. Let's look at the replay. We'll find a definitive answer here, I think. And there's a play. She yeah, got she under got it. She got in there. She, she got it. under it. Great slide. And that's the number eight hitter. And a white producing again, but what you said last inning. I mean, if you put a ball in play, there's a good chance that you get a run, right? And they had three yep. strikeouts in the, in the same situation right here. They put a ball in play, and they get the run. And Mathis is at the plate, and you know she can make contact. So this inning so far, Vicknair got the single. Then LaDuff was a courtesy runner. She stole second and stole third. And then the bouncer to the pitcher and the throw to the plate, not in time, and Dutchtown takes the lead, and there's only one out. And it's 2-0. and oh. So one run is in. There's one out. Anna White's at first after reaching on the fielder's choice. Then we look at it again. Here's a great play by Bear to stab that. And it's a foul tip. But, like, look at the <laughs> – look at that so close. That's a great camera work right there by our crew, too. Give us a couple looks at that. Good job, Nolan. Two one, one out, four three Dutchtown, outside three one. Mathis gets on right here. It's going to flip the lineup again. Yep. Bennett and Johnson potentially coming to the plate. Fouled away. Ooh. Three two. She swings it, huh? She's yes, like she does. <laughs> she was trying to make it a six to three right She's there. Going for the downs. Dutchtown, Dutchtown looks like they play uh, modern baseball, I guess. <laughs> play for the homer. We don't, you don't need base runners. Who needs that? Right. You don't play for doubles. You play for homers. Oh, there's a fly ball to deep left in play. Caught. Well, she just missed that pitch right there. Sent uh, Terrio all the way back to the fence in left field right there. I tell you what. 
That was close. <laughs> Look, she's feeling for the wall. Yep, Didn't exactly quite get what there. you're supposed to do. Great job by Terry o right there. Get back there. Put your hand out. You know, you're not at a dead sprint, so you kind of kind of reach out, feel. Maybe you might have to jump, but you just need to know where you are, and that's exactly what she did. And now, Riley Bennett. With two outs, ball one. So Anna White on the fielder's choice, pitcher to home plate. And LaDuff scores. And that's how we got to four. And now we have two outs in the leadoff hitter. And Bennett, two home runs. We saw her hit one to dead center at East Ascension mm -hmm. last week. Saw White right there. She was trying to steal that bag. And outside. 2-0. and oh. Two and one, actually, she oh, yeah. said foul ball. Okay, yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. trying to think if she's Must be. going to try to steal this base right here. No. No, and it's in the dirt. May have been a good one to go on right there. Yeah. Three and one. Now you're staying put for sure now. Yep. White has nine stolen bases. Caught twice. And there's a fly ball to deep right in play and caught by the right fielder, Dakota. And so Dutchdown took a couple for a ride there, and they did not go out the park. But they get one run on one hit, no errors, and one left. And so now at the bottom of the eighth, it's 4-3, and Dutchtown can play for the win as we look at the schedule one more time for yep. the game of the Say week. Say it again. We're next week, we've got the same matchup, just different venues. We've got Santa Mall heading to Dutchtown, and then Dutchtown coming back to Santa Mall on the second and fourth of next week. And then to finish up our regular season play, we're going to see Dutchtown travel to East Ascension on the 11th of April. And so that's going to finish out our regular season, and then we'll get to postseason. And I should be back with some broadcasts right at that point. Jimmy Frederick's going to join you for the last three. He's going to take you home this season. And our game of the week, it's been some good ones so far. We've had, uh, we've had three outstanding games, the uh, Dutchtown Santa Ma softball classic, then the EA come for behind win over Santa Ma on Tuesday night, and now we have extra innings. And Dutchtown playing for the win with Freilich on the mound. There's deja vu all over again. Santa Mall behind by one run. And look who's at the plate. Let's see what decision is made here. Are you going to pitch to her? What would you do? I'm not I'm pitching her, to her. I'm putting her on. I'm not pitching to her. But she hit one. I came up playing a different game, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. She hit one about 500 feet to center field. <laughs> She hit one on the roof of one of the temporary buildings. So it's going to be Franklin, Mesh, and Zeller, 2-3-4. That's exactly who you want to have coming up. Well, the luxury of getting the one run is she's not going to have a walk-off homer. Right. We saw that last season here yep. at... Santa Ma in the Dutchtown Santa Ma game as in the bottom of the seventh, A.J. Jackson hit a walk off after about a 13 pitch at bat where she hit about <laughs> she hit about nine, nine pitches out to left field. Straight over the left field dugout. Yep. That's not even a thing, left field dugout. I should have said third base dugout. Yeah. We all knew what you meant. So here we go. The decision What do you think? Looks like it may happen. I don't know. Different pitcher. She faced West last time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no. She. Yeah, I think she faced Yeah, she West. did. She yeah. faced West. This is, this is Fraley. She's homer twice off of West, as a matter of fact. Look at this shot right here. One yeah, more time. Yeah, West. Here you go. Right on top of that building. Boom. Man. 
That makes some noise if you're inside of there, too, by mm -hmm. the way. That scares the heck out of some <laughs> people. I used to teach in one of those. So she's two for two inside, ball two. I think they wanted that first pitch, but uh, see what the, the umpire is going to give them. And now two and oh, you really going to give her anything here? Yeah, we'll it might be see. a little unintentional, intentional walk. We talked about a few times. See if she might try to chase something out of the zone. Maybe be a little over aggressive, but doesn't seem to be doing that thus far. So three and zero, I wouldn't think yeah. she's going to see anything good to hit at all. I think she right crossed here. up Mathis right there. She crossed her up, or she, she pulled the string on that pitch, and I think Mathis may have tried to try to web that pitch right there to, to, to frame it a little bit better. That's when you don't use your glove. You yeah. don't move your glove. You want to catch it at the end of the at the end of the web, so it still looks like a strike. 3-0. Uh, Four-pitch walk. So they didn't intentionally walk her per <laughs> se. We'll never know. Mm -hmm. And now, Mesh single to left. She scored the second run the go-ahead run in the bottom of the sixth. And now you're going to see if the number three hitter is going to drop one. It looks like first and third are expecting, perhaps, the possibility. And there it is, fouled away. Oh, Ooh, good catch in the stands. There you go. Nice job. <laughs> Samoff, Samoff side, proud of that. The Dutch out <laughs> saying he caught it. That's an out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, one. Tying run is at first. We're in extra innings. Four, three in the eighth. Dutchtown leads. Oh, one. It didn't look like she was going to square right there. No. But good job. I mean, Frelick, if you saw that first pitch right there, it was kind of a little up in the zone. That's the that's the pitch you actually want them to try to bump because you have more of a chance to pop that pitch up for an easy out. Hi. Two and one. Yeah, we haven't seen her square. The last two pitches. We gave her one pitch to try to bunt, and then she's going to let her swing away. Both of these teams have been on the ropes multiple times, and both of them have come back out swinging. That's why they're number one and number two. Two and one. Strike on the outside corner. Two, two paintball right there. That's just a tough pitch. I mean, yep. And, you know, you, you, you can swing at that and maybe try to fight it off, but you, you're going to foul it off. It's going to be a strike anyway, right? I mean, it's changed the eye levels. Two pitches per hour were elevated. You're going to paint down and away. You still have a strike left, so that's one that you probably get yourself out on if you swing and hit that ball. Ouch. And that's off her leg. Oh, it's another shin shot maybe. And that's going to be painful for sure. She's got the shin guard on there, too. Might have got just on the outside. Let's take another look. Boom, right off the top. That's yep. that hit directly on the shin guard, too. If she doesn't have that, mm -hmm. she's in a world of hurt right now. Exactly. Ask the home plate umpire. <laughs> two and two. Nobody out. Franklin at first. She's the tying run. Mesh is the go-ahead run. Fouled away. Staying alive. Mary Beth Zeller on deck. She had the go-ahead RBI double in the sixth. Scoreless after five. Santa Maria led 3-1 after six. 
It's three to three at the end of seven, and now it's four three Dutchtown in the eighth. And there's a bouncer to the pitcher. They're going to go to second, and they get Franklin one to six, and Mesh reaches on the fielder's choice. Good job by Freilich right there. Knew exactly what she was supposed to do. You get a one hopper right back to you. You got you have time to turn and throw. Now, if she would have had to move like anywhere left, right, from, you know, forward, back, or whatever, then that's a ball you try to make sure you get an out and you're going to go to first with. But good job, good decision. Knew what she wanted to do before that play even happened. Now, Zeller doubled to right center her last at bat. If she does that here, it could be 4-4. Four, four. Now, Mesh is at first, and that one's short. And now they're going to go to second and a throw. Got her, I think, if they hold on to it. They did. Great recovery by Mathis right there. My goodness, that ball oh, was right boy. underneath her. She couldn't find it immediately. No, that was about two feet shy of home plate. I mean, Mesh thought she, she was having trouble. Got kind of a late jump. And Johnson held on to it. Huge out for the Lady Griffins right there. Two to four. See, it's underneath her right there. Oh, no, that's Dupree. It's That's short. Look yeah, at that. Dupree, Held on to God, it. What a strong throw by Mathis right there on the money. And it's 2-0, and oh, and all of a sudden, two outs. Dutchtown. One out away from a victory. And Zeller trying to stay alive, and it's 3-0. and oh. Look at that again. The tag. Boy, what a good throw. Yep. Good throw, good catch, good tag. And it's on Held the right side the of the bag. Yep. Okay, so it counts 2-0, and o, excuse me. 2-0, two, two outs. That was the first pitch that she advanced on. Strike call. See the Dustown outfielders playing fairly deep. Don't want to try to, don't want to give up a double here if you can help it. I'm going to keep everything in front of you. Try to keep Zeller at first base if she happens to hit one towards that gap or down the line. So Franklin walked. Then Mesh erased her on the field of choice. And there's a strike. And then Mesh got caught stealing. Another fantastic pitch by Freilich right there. Just wearing out that outside corner. Two and two. Two outs, number two team, is trying, trying to stay alive. Oh, you got some experience at the plate. Zeller's been in positions like this before. And it's oh. off of her shoulder. That one fouled up right off her face mask. Bounce off the ground. Dutchtown doing something that has previously been thought unthinkable, trying to sweep Santa Maria. Just beating them once is amazing. They're one pitch away from a sweep. And it's hit the second, the throw to first, they get it. And Dutchtown sweeps Santa Maria on the season with one run in the eighth inning. And our final score, Dutchtown four, Santa Maria three. This was a classic, Mike, and uh, Lived up to the billing for Not sure. Great, great. I mean, just unbelievable pitching through the first five innings. And once you got to the third time and through the lineup on both sides, we started seeing a little bit of action. Got a couple of relievers. Both teams pushed some runs across the board, tied it back up. Dustown scrapes one in the top of the eighth. A couple of good defensive plays hold Santa Maria off, and gives gonna, the Lady Griffins the victory. Right. We're going to keep it here for a minute and get some of the color of this. Uh, post game because we can also talk about some of the things that matter here. We talked about why this game was so important. Dutchtown trying to hold on to the number one power rating. They're going to hold that obviously, but even more importantly in district, they're now two and a half games ahead of Santa Maria. And so I believe they have two games left to play. And so if they can win those, then they're going to come away with a district title over Santa Maria and the rest of yeah, I mean, five, five, I, mean I, I guess mathematically too. If they do lose those games, the next the next closest team has two losses in district, right? So, yes. So technically, they can the worst they can do is is split the title 
and, in the district. And, of course, Santa Maw is going to be disappointed because now they, they, their shot at winning a district title is almost eliminated, but they're going to stay at number two. Sure. They want to stay in that top six and get that by, and they have a shot to play at Sulphur, and both of these teams do. And it's potentially uh, not the last meeting between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, you said it. I don't, I don't think these two teams are – I mean, I don't think Santa Maul will drop at all. I think they'll stay at number two. You don't you don't lose much by losing to the, to the you know, the, one, the number one team right there. And, I mean, this is <laughs> – it's classic. I mean, this is exactly what we expected, and it's exactly what we got. Kind of, kind of tale of two different games. We saw nothing the first five innings. Love the pitching because I'm a pitching guy. Yep. And then it kind of flip flopped towards the last three innings, and we saw some uh, we saw some activity. So we're going to take one final break, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap things up. Our final score in extra innings: Dutchtown four, Santa Maria three. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Rev Business is connecting companies from the bayou to the river to the lake with the technology, expertise, and uniquely homegrown support that only Rev Business can deliver. From internet and hosted phone to managed Wi Fi and Metro E, our best in class services are tailored to your needs, backed by in house support and a local team devoted to keeping your business up and running. Visit us at let'srev.biz. Rev Business. B.T. Chapman and A.J. Pickett with Advantage Therapy are honored and excited to team up with Dutchtown High School's athletics. At Advantage Therapy, we are dedicated to helping our patients regain the highest possible functional status through one-on-one -on -one patient care. Advantage Therapy has spent nearly two decades providing both outpatient orthopedic physical therapy and occupational therapy to the people of Ascension and surrounding parishes. From all of us at Advantage Therapy, Go Griffins! It's game day in Raising Canes. If you want to order like a champ, forget about X's and O's. The only play you're running is chicken. So what combo are you picking? We've got tailgates of hand-battered, cooked-to-order chicken fingers and cane sauce. Touchdown! And jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. This season is about to be unbeatable. Raising Canes chicken fingers. One love. <laughs> Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyra Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Tuttle Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Tuttle Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Tuttle Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You gotta call. You gotta call Tuttle. Looking for an extraordinary education opportunity? Introducing Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where you can earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree from River Parish's Community College at the same time. Experience the best of both worlds as high school seamlessly blends with college coursework in a rigorous yet supportive program. Yet stay connected to your home high school through clubs, organizations, and sports. And here's the best part. Students pay no tuition or textbook costs. Ascension Public Schools Early College Option Program, where your future begins today. Rev Business is here to connect your company beyond your storefront. We're here to power your passion, improve your communication, and link you to your customers with the services you need and the local support you deserve. 
From operating your front office to tracking your inventory, our team is ready to deliver services that transform your day-to-day with flexibility and consistency. So you can focus on what matters most, your customers, Rev Business. Welcome back, and it's still intense out here, even in the post game here. Jeff Forsh, Mike Moeller with you. Our final score in extra innings, Dutchtown beats Santa Ma 4-3. to three. They get one run in the eighth on a fielder's choice by Anna White, and Parker LaDuff scores at home plate just under the tag, and that's how Dutchtown gets the victory and sweeps Santa Ma. And you see the victorious team right there, and you see the final out of this game as Johnson goes to Vic Nair to get the third out and the victory. And it was a good one, and uh, excellent. congratulations. Yep, excellent. I mean, excellent all the way around. Good pitching like we talked about. We mentioned so many times today through the first five. Timely hitting. I mean, everybody, fundamental plays. The, 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 the winning run is just a bang, bang, great slide. Great play on both sides, you know. To, uh, to, to put touchdown up by one run and ex- exactly what we expected out of these two teams. They did not disappoint. And let's uh, recognize the seniors one more time as we will take a look at the Dutchtown seniors first. There you have it. From left to right, you'll see Ariel Hayes, Riley Bennett, Caroline Mathis, Maddie West, Harper Dupree, Asia Weaver, and Sydney Dunham. And then moving over to the Lady Gators, Again, from left to right, you see Emily Terrio, then Gracie Bursajay, Mary Beth Zeller, Mackenzie Ellisar, Samantha Landash, and Alex Franklin. One of the most successful senior groups in any sport here in Ascension Parish. Congratulations to them. Yep, we want to say thank you to the coaches yesterday because I think they took those pictures maybe. I mean, I want to say thanks today because I think they may have taken those pictures yesterday just so we could put that on our our broadcast this evening. So thank you to – to the coaches for that. Right. Dutchtown and Coach Ensminger and Santa Ma and with Coach Petrie are always so cooperative to us, and uh, we're greatly appreciative of that. And so we would like to remind everyone that you can watch our games live streamed on the Rev Sports 1 YouTube channel each week, as well as replays on TV on Rev Channel 4. Thanks for watching tonight, and as a reminder, join us Tuesday at 545 from Griffin Park in Geismer as the Griffins will host Santa Ma in a 5-5A district baseball game. For Mike Moeller, I'm Jeff Porsche. You've been watching the Rev Game of the Week.